I'm Lucy and right now I'm plummeting through the air at 20 miles an hour. OK, actually right now I'm in my bedroom experiencing the same nightmare that's been plaguing me for years. I've tried everything. Soothing lights, meditation, warm milk. I've even tried listening to my dad's now that's what I call calm cassette. Both sides. Nothing seems to work. If only I could find a way to control what goes on inside my head when I'm asleep. I might be able to have sweet dreams for once. But until then, here we go again. Well, that was a horrendous way to start the day. Although, my dad mentioned something last night that might help with my nightmares. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I made a note of it in my diary. Ooh, it looks like I've just received an email. Ah, here's my diary. Damn, I must have locked it before I went to bed last night. Now, where did I hide that key? It's a pretty big piece of stuffing from inside a cuddly toy. OK. It's got something shiny in it. It's my pet piranha, Clive. He's guarding his treasure. Good idea. He's always hungry. Here you go, Clive. Dindins. OK. Let's see what he's guarding. Ooh, a little golden key. How exciting. The key fits. Now at least I can read what's inside. Oh yeah, my dad was reading some book about positivity. That's a good place to start. He's probably left it downstairs somewhere. I'll make notes in my diary as I go along so I don't forget to do anything important. Why not? I'll just add it to the rest. He doesn't even look like a proper pirate. Shiny. It's a money box. No matter how much I put in, it never gets full. Nice island. I'm not sure if I should even have this on my wall though. be careful around the house. If it's old, expensive and breakable, my parents probably have one. In for a penny. The most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have. Why my mother insisted on purple and green is beyond me. Let's see what we've got in here. Berry flavoured analgesic gloop for children. This sweet medicine's the only bright side to having a cold. You never know when you might need a tasty headache cure. Good idea. These are great for patching up stuff. Let's take a look. Ooh, fascinating. A load of vibrant blue water. of this stuff is there he's in there now but I can't see what he's up to it couldn't hurt to take a little look inside his room it looks like my twin brother Lloyd is torturing another helpless animal 
Yep. Brave little guy's obviously made a dash for freedom. I wonder if Lloyd knows what happened to him. Why is there stuffing everywhere? It was clogging up my scalpel. What's that in the vice? <laughs> what are you doing? Improvising. What exactly are you improvising? Groin surgery. What happened to your gerbil? He's done a runner. The little git chewed through the bars and escaped last night. That's why I've had to improvise. I've had enough of talking to you. You and me both. It's me carrying Mr Fumble, my toy bear. It's my twin brother Lloyd. He was biting the photographer's leg when this was taken. I don't even want to think about what goes on in there. It's stuck in its mouth. Mum's prize salmon. It's st Mum's prize salmon. It's still got the winning hook in its mouth. It's my mother fly fishing in Scotland. It's my mother hunting a mole with a blunderbuss. Maybe its ghost is stuck up the chimney. It's a bell jar containing a reassembled mole. My mum sure does love dispatching defenceless animals. It sounds like there's something trapped up there. Psych Out Volume 3, Regaining Control. This must be the book my dad was reading. This is interesting. It says you can create a positive dream box. 1. Find a suitable box. 2. Decorate with peaceful runes. 3. Add a dream companion. Mr Fumble, my toy bear, would be perfect. But he went missing yesterday. 4. Add inspiration to distract from any negative thoughts. Books and other literature work best. Then apparently I'd just place it next to my bed. This is definitely worth a try. There's a footnote. You can combat fear with laughter. How insightful. I can see through to the hallway. It's made of hickory and says 11 o'clock. It's also broken and only ever chimes at 1 o'clock. It's my rucksack with my shoes and underwear in it. Got it. It's got a badge on it from an Easter egg hunt. But I'm hoping to collect a few more badges. I can't open the door while it's still switched on. My clothes are spinning around in there. Okay. I need to dry them out before I can wear them. It's for collecting the washing lint. Okay. There's a lovely plump lint bunny in here. It's a smallish cardboard box. This looks like a good size for my dream box. It's all dried up. That brush isn't going anywhere. I don't need any degreaser. Got them. It's empty.
This was Lloyd's first victim. It had to be sewn back together again. His teeth are like flipping razors. I suppose his sharp teeth might come in handy for something. It's from my parents. We're out at the regional otter flinging championships. D -d don't let Lloyd start throwing stuff out of his window again. And please, d -d don't go in the kitchen. Your mother accidentally took out the stopcock with her crossbow. And there's water all over the floor. D -d Dad. No idea what's even kept in there. I can see the badger's head in reverse. Its left eye looks like it's hanging by a thread. It's hanging on for dear life. I'll take his loose eye off. The bit of thread just snapped off. This mat is really abrasive. Honestly, it's like wiping your feet on sandpaper. I'm sure I get shorter every time I use it. I'd love to. If I want to flush out what's in the chimney, I'll need something with a thicker end. Okay, here goes. Hey, it ran into that hole. Yeah, this seems like a really good idea. I think that's probably enough. Hey, that actually worked. They're all dry. Gun magazine. Fire first, think later. Moisturising camouflage lip balm. Free with this issue. Oh, there's a free camouflage lip balm on the front. Mmm, smells like peaches. There we go, some nice relaxing rooms. I'll put it next to my bed when I'm ready. Lloyd's gerbil sitting right on top of the clock now. Great stuff. Now it's ready to put things into. He's not really what I'd call a companion. This is where all hell breaks loose. It's my crappy dream box with nothing inspirational inside and no companion. Picking it up would most likely bring back my nightmare. He's surprisingly bad at trapping flies, but swallows all sorts of other crap. It's a big round map of the planet. An inspiring collection of jokes for carnivorous plants. I'll keep this one on me. Why don't carnivorous plants like wearing trousers? because their flies keep getting stuck. He loves these. Maybe I should read him another one. Why did the pitcher plant enjoy being on an all-fly diet? It was so easy to stick to. Ooh, a key just fell out of him. Did you hear Snoop Dogg's latest song about interplanetary travel? It was a Venus flight wrap. That one's his favourite. Why are 
carnivorous plant so good at keeping secrets? They keep their trap shut. Look at those tendrils go. What's a fly trap's favourite game? Snap! I'd better stop soon. He might uproot himself. Why do carnivorous plants love old adventure games? They're full of bugs. Oh no, that was the last one. OK. It's not even a real draw. It's a drawer that's been jammed shut for as long as I can remember. It's a drawer with a little keyhole. There's a roll of duct tape in here. It's empty. should stop anything getting in or out. Now it says one o'clock. Great, now he's in my mum's welly. I'm sick of carrying this duct tape around too. Finally, got the little bugger. I'll get rid of this bog brush now, it's minging. This one's suspiciously close to my brother's bedroom door. That had better be the last piece. I'm stuffed. That one was suspiciously close to Lloyd. I wonder what he's doing in there. Maybe I should take another look. It's my twin brother Lloyd. Looks like he's torturing another animal. <laughs> no! Mr Fumble! What's Mr Fumble doing in your vice? He's going to be so popular with all the lady bears after his operation. He's going to be a magnificent tripod. Give my bear back! Not unless you have something I can add more legs to. If I retain your gerbil, can I have Mr. Fumble back? Sure, I prefer a moving target. I found your gerbil. A likely story. How can I give your gerbil back with the door closed? Use your imagination. I've had enough of talking to you. You and me both. It's a boot with a living gerbil inside. He's obviously quite a good climber. The less abrasive of our two doormats. Some privacy, please. My mum was harpooning moles this morning. It's the chalk outline of Lloyd's hamster. He's up there now, torturing some poor creature. Looks like Lloyd's been throwing things out of his window again. That probably happened when Mum was harpooning. Any rain coming down there is going to go straight into Lloyd's room. It leads all the way round to Lloyd's bedroom window. I hate to do this, but I need to get my bear back. What the f... How <laughs> back for more, are you? Well, I won't be needing this piece of crap anymore. Mr Fumble, what has he done to you? Come 
to Mummy. Poor Mr Fumble. He's got a big hole in his tummy and he's missing some stuffing. It's got a puncture. Looks like I'm not going anywhere until it's fixed. This should patch that hole in the tyre. Great, it's still flat though. Not without a tetanus shot. It's bursting with... Flat as a... Looks like I'm not going... You little got it. There, now it's a straight fish hook. This'll be handy. That's a good start, but he'll need more. That's a nice plump bear. Now, I just need to get him sewn up. There we go, all stitched up. He's all better now. In you go, Mr. Fumble. Some privacy, please. Well, I suppose this counts as inspiration. OK, I'm all ready. Let's do this. Well, this is different. It's not exactly what I'd call a sweet dream, but I suppose it's a step in the right direction. I wonder if there's anything here that can help me with my nightmare. I seriously doubt it. Uh, hi. If you say so. You're real. Apparently. You don't say much, do you? Look, I've literally got a splitting stomachache and I almost ended up having experimental surgery on my bear hood. So forgive me if I don't feel like entering into a protracted chit-chat session with you. Someone who spent most of their life squashing me, drooling on my fur, chewing my eyes. Oh, good point. I'm sorry. 
for everything. It's okay. It's just not the best day to find yourself anthropomorphically personified. I'll leave you alone now. Thanks. I appreciate that. Comedy Club Rules 1. Minimum 6 jokes per routine 2. No fraternising with the judges 3. No jokes about weed killer I can hear laughter on the other side Didn't the book say that I could combat fear with laughter? I need to open these curtains Ok, that's just weird There's no time to build a tiny castle. I'd get covered in monkey sand. This must be the rope that needs to be pulled down in order to open the curtains. Hmm, I'm not heavy enough to pull this down by myself. how we could open these curtains How should I know? I'm not heavy enough to pull the rope Could you give it a go? Sure A head trauma would go great with this tash in my stomach Ok, hang in there for a moment I'm hanging My regular dream was weird. He's got weird sticky stuff in his hair. It's open mic night. I need to find out what that's all about. That seems a bit niche. Quit dreaming and order your pinch me picture tonight. Hey, little lady. What is this place? The Trap. It's a comedy club for carnivorous plants. What's the microphone for? It's to give would-be comedians a shot at the big time. Well, the medium time at any rate. You mean anyone can have a go? Yep. This place has no standards at all. Why would anyone take part? Comedy is a window to the soul. It can help you relearn things about yourself that you'd forgotten. Plus, there's a prize if you score over 20 points. What's the prize? Usually, it's whatever I can find behind the bar. I could do with something that'll prevent me falling to my death. Heavy. Preferably not. People usually just want money. But if you score over 20 points, just come over to the bar and I'll see what I can find. Who are those judges? The Three Spooges. Big TV stars a few years back, but their show was cancelled and they fell on hard times. Now, they take it out on all the new comedians. What sort of jokes do they like? Hmm. Anything about plants, flies, or gangster rap tends to go down well. The more jokes, the better. What's in a pinch me picture? Fruit juice, wasabi, black pepper, and my own digestive enzymes. It really wakes you up. One pinch me picture, please. Sure, this one's on the house. Don't drink it all at once. Thanks. I'll just pick it up before someone else takes it. Thanks for the chat. Anytime. I think they're expecting me to talk into it. OK, then. Why don't carnivorous plants like wearing trousers?
because their flies keep getting stuck. Get it? <laughs> oh, crowd. What's a fly trap's favourite game? Snap. Anyone? <laughs> Is this thing on? Why do carnivorous plants love old adventure games? They're full of bugs. <laughs> oh, come on, this is comedy gold. Did you hear Snoop Dogg's latest song about interplanetary travel? It was a Venus flight wrap. <laughs> that went a bit better. Why are carnivorous plants so good at keeping secrets? They keep their traps shut. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all week. Why did the picture plant enjoy being on an all fly diet? It was so easy to stick to. <laughs> I'm on fire. Thank you and good night. Well, that's all the jokes I know. You know what? I'm happy with that. And those scores look kind of familiar too. I wonder what the prize will be. He looks like a giant green bucket with eyes. Hey, I can hear you in a monologue. Would you say it out loud? Hello. Hey, little lady. I scored over 20 points. What's my prize? Great job. Let me see what I can find back here. Hmm, that's not a lot. You'll just have to take my pet, Herman. Who hey, what? Take good care of him, and he'll take care of you. Remember, items you're carrying while you're asleep stay in your inventory. Even if you switch dreams. Good tip, thanks. Anytime. It's not mine. Okay, here goes. Man, that tasted horrible. What did the barman say? Items I was carrying in one dream will appear in another. I wonder if that'll help me with my nightmare. Let's remove this natty dream box and see what happens when I go back to sleep. Here we go again. still the same and it's still horrible fly Herman fly good job Herman I guess this means my nightmare is finally over to start running. I suppose you could call that progress, but frankly, it's not a whole lot more relaxing than plummeting. I wonder if my 
dad's book has any more pearls of wisdom. Chapter 2. Breaking Bread Sharing food with friends and enemies alike can help to bring you inner peace while you sleep. Both figuratively and literally, food can inspire companionship and reconciliation. OK, so a joke book's not going to cut it with Mr Rawson back there. Looks like I've got an email. It wants my passcode. I'm sure it's in my brain somewhere, but I'm buggered if I can remember it. I'll make That's it. Right, let's read that email. Hmm, do I remember what? It's from someone calling themselves H. Looks like there's a photo attached. It's an article from the local paper ten years ago. Disley Ferret Murdered. The director of Figgington's controversial new theme park, Disneyland, was found murdered the day before the grand opening. He was discovered dressed up as the park's mascot, the Disley Ferret. However, police are still searching for the missing head of the costume, as they believe it may help lead them to the head of the director, which was also missing. The rest of the article's been torn off. Wait a minute. Something's coming back to me. There's something familiar about this whole story. My past, my memories, my nightmares. I feel like they're all connected to this event. My dad's book's helping me to control my dreams. But if I can find out exactly what went on ten years ago, maybe I'll be able to rid myself of these nightmares altogether. I reckon the local library will have a full copy of the article in its archives. My bike's parked just outside the house. Ah, my favourite dungarees. Looks like the postman's been. This must have arrived while I was asleep. Stuff you. It's from my mum's taxidermist. Contents. Formaldehyde. Fun-sized bottle. Flesh-eating beetles. Family bumper pack. One plastinated pufferfish. It's taped shut. It's taped shut. I need to find something to open it with. Why are there never any bloody scissors in this house? I'd use my teeth, but they're probably not sharp enough. Let's put those razor sharp gnashes to good use, shall we? One dead puffer fish. Ow, that's a prickly fish. One small bottle of formaldehyde. And a bumper pack of flesh eating beetles. This stuff's bound to come in handy for something. I wonder if I can file these spikes down a bit. There we go. Smooth as Action Man's pants. Now if I squeeze the air out of him, he just refills through his bottom. Here, wrap your little fishy chops around this. Good as new. Let's head to the library. Ooh, a map just appeared in the top corner of the screen. That looks very useful. No one seems to be using it, so I guess it's mine now. A font of free knowledge. Affording the residents of Figgington a chance to furnish their minds and gain a deeper understanding of the wider world. 
I don't think I've ever seen someone inside. Whoa, it's really hot in here. Blame Satan. I beg your pardon? Shh! Sorry. Satan, the devil's in the detail. Free, eternally heated mug with every purchase. It's Miss Hambleton. She's worked here for over a thousand years, probably. Hello, Miss Hambleton. Shh! What's behind that curtain? More astounding works of Satan, dearie. Astounding works of Satan? In a library? It's true. Satan pretty much controls all the libraries in the area now. Did Satan make it so hot in here? Undoubtedly. Satan's instruments put out a lot of heat. How goes the library today, Miss Hambleton? Oh, I'm incredibly busy. It's been non-stop in here all day. Busy? There's no one here. Books don't stamp themselves. Unless you have one of those fancy automatic book stamping machines. They're made by Satan. Satan makes automatic book stamping machines? Absolutely. Satan are the leading supplier of library equipment in the county. Here's a copy of their latest catalogue. They're committed to making librarians' lives easier through a process of innovation, technology, and redundancy. Let me show you our latest bit of Satan tech. Prepare yourself. This is going to revolutionize our tiny library. This is the Bibliotheque 9000. It can find any book your soul is yearning for. Let me show you how. I scan my library card here. Now I think of the book I want to borrow. The bibliotheque searches my soul. Uh, I mean, it scans the electrical impulses in my brain. It locates the book's details and dispenses it right over there. And here it is. Oh, my dear sweet Edmund. <laughs> Anyway, if I want to return the book, I just put it on this shoot here. <coughs> Goodbye, my love. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some books that I surely need stamping. <laughs> Hello, Miss Hambleton. Shh. Do you have any books about bread or baking? We have Paula Holyrood's latest book on pre-order, but it's not come in yet. I'm looking for an old newspaper article. Try the computer in the corner. All the archives are kept on there. What can you tell me about that book your soul was yearning for? Oh, my dear Edmund. He was a local poet and a fine, fine man. He'd write the most beautiful poems just for me. Then one morning, he boarded a train and never came back. He sent the library that book and his membership card before he died. Bye. Shh. It can find any book in the library. Satan. Self-aware textbook arrangement networks. Making idle hands work for you. The library card just fell out. Okay, let's see if this works. 
All good. Poems for Ill-Fated Lovers by Edmund Plum There's a message written inside I board the train of regret At a time I will never forget I hope you remember likewise When you see the world through my eyes Graham's monkey will keep our little secret E.P. It contains the library's archive of local newspaper articles. It's asking for a library membership card. I wonder if this card will work in here. Shh! Sorry. It's a photo ID for Figgington Public Library. Mr Edmund Plum, deceased. She's busy st Hello, Miss Hambleton. Shh. Do you know a Graham who may or may not have had a monkey? <gasps> you must be referring to Saint Graham. He was the patron saint of Moon Logic. There are so many obscure happenings in the local area, they named the village church after him. Thanks, I'll check it out. I'll add the church to my map. Who are you talking to? No one. Well, be quiet then. How can I get a library card? Join the library, Poppet. It's not rocket science. We send the forms to your home address, fill them in and return them, and you will receive your new library card in three months. I think I'll leave it, thanks. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Is there any other way to access the newspaper archive? Not unless you can steal someone else's library card. And then somehow fool the archive's facial recognition software into thinking it's yours. That's a great idea, thanks. Don't be ridiculous. It's obviously a terrible idea. You'd need to know their personal PIN number, too. It's better than waiting three months. Personally, I'd rather you didn't access it at all. I mean, really. Who installs a talking computer in a library? Why does your newspaper archive have facial recognition? Personal biometrics and data are the only currency Satan is interested in. It's a bit old school now, though. Our new book retrieval system in the back room doesn't even have a face scanner. Once you've put the library card in, it scrapes any desires, guilty secrets and other data it needs directly from your soul and sends them directly to head office for profiling. That's both ingenious and terrifying in equal measure. They got the idea from that social media company. Meta? Yes, it is a bit. Let's talk about something else. What can you tell me about that book your soul was yearning for? Oh, my dear Edmund. He was a local. He'd write the most then one. He sent the library that book. Bye. Shh. A gang of tits. He's taking photos. An instant camera that delivers handy self-adhesive photographs. I don't think that's appropriate. Hello there. What are you doing? Gathering evidence. Evidence of what? I'm going to catch the thieving blighters in the act. 
thieves? That's right. You name it, they've nicked it. Kisses. What are you talking about? The thieves I'm after are tits. Tits? They lie in wait in this tree. Then swoop down on unsuspecting parishioners and plunder anything they can lay their thieving little beaks on. Jewelry, keys, money. They swipe anything metal and shiny if it's not strapped down. Then they leave it all up on the church roof. The tits are leaving stuff on the church roof? Yep, there's probably a ton of ill-gotten gains up there. Please may I borrow your camera? No way! It's the only way I'll catch them in the act. I've been petitioning the parish council to have the tits exterminated. But they won't unless they have hard evidence. I'll catch the little blighters. That's an unusual hat. My pride and joy. It's made out of tits. Your hat is made out of tits? One of this country's most prolific birds. I can't stand them, but the fellas do make good headwear. I think you'd get on well with my mother. You really love that hat, don't you? Almost as much as I hate tits. They stole my last one because I was foolhardy enough to put a shiny hat pin in it. I had to drop what I was doing and chase them, but they took it up on the roof and I never got it back. I'm not making that mistake again. Bye. Goodbye. It's all spiky. I wonder what species it is. It's under the tree. I'd need a good reason to start digging around in a churchyard. There's a village fate today, apparently. Hello there. What? I, I said hello there. What? Can you hear me? Stop mumbling. I said, can you hear me? There's no need to shout. I should have seen that one coming. Hang on, I'll turn my hearing aid up. What are you doing here? I come to listen to the bells. They're so quiet, I can only hear them if I sit right here at the front. I'm sure they used to be louder. Where's the vicar? He's down at the village fete. Probably in the W.I. tent waiting for Paula Holyrood. Who's Paula Holyrood? She's some kind of bacon celebrity. She goes on TV and tells other people how rubbish their macarons are. Why is the vicar interested in Paula Holyrood? Something to do with the W.I.'s jam competition. Plus, she has other assets. Do you want me to ring the bells for you? Oh, that would be lovely. But only if you know the correct order. I don't like change. Also, don't overuse the large one. It's only quiet, but it makes the old church shake. Last time somebody rang it, a gargoyle fell off the roof and almost hit the vicar. Do you know what order to ring the bells in? Sorry, no. All I know is they tell the story of St. Graham and his unnecessary demise in the Sierra Mountains. Do you know anything about a monkey? Don't be absurd. Unless, of course, you mean the monkey puzzle tree outside. That sounds like just the kind of vague and ambiguous hint I was after. Thanks. What? Thanks. You're welcome. Have you heard about the tits? Did Brian put you up to this? He's bloody obsessed with them. Though, if he's right, there's probably tons of valuable stuff up on the church roof. Shame there's no way to get it down. The roof's completely inaccessible. 
Do you know anything about bread or baking? Well, because I'm an old woman, I obviously know how to bake. Well, do you know how to bake? Of course I do. But I'm an appalling teacher. You're better off finding a good recipe book instead. Bye! Ta-ta! It shows a blue moon shining on a load of red poppies in a yellow desert. It shows two white snowy mountains being lit by yellow sun rays. It shows a blue dragon breathing red fire on a load of brown earth. So this is the monkey mentioned in the book. Someone's carved their initials onto it. J.H. loves E.P. OK, let's see what secrets you're keeping. I hope the trousers don't fall down. An old biscuit tin with a photograph inside. It's a black and white photograph of a young couple. They both look a bit familiar, but their eyes have been cut out. Creepy. I'll put it inside the book. If I line up the library stamp, the numbers in their eyes read 10.15. Maybe that's the time his train was due to leave. It was obviously important to him. Points for effort though. I guess their love affair was a secret at the time. I just heard something fall off the roof. It's all very shiny. Don't mind if I do. Possessive little blighters. See a pin, pick it up, and all day long you'll have a pin. He'd notice if I did it now. Not again! Give my heart back, you little bits! After all that, he ran the wrong way. What a plonker. Okay. Selfie time. Oh, looks like that was the last photo. The perfect crime, as long as no one looks at the name, or the date of birth, or the badly adhered and ill-fitting photograph. I wonder if it'll be enough to fool Satan. Fate under construction. Come back later. Fington Village Fate Committee. Right, let's give it a go. Welcome, Hitman. I am Karen, the Keyless Audio Recognition and Exploration Network. What is your pin? Pin accepted.
What would you like to do? Searching. Search complete. Loading results. Have a satisfactory day. Fergus Fick, the man behind the ferret. Fergus Fick, son of Archibald and Lucille, the late Lord and Lady of Fick Hall, intends to channel his inner mustelid in an attempt to promote his latest venture, Disneyland, a new theme park to be built on the Fig estate. The park has sparked controversy amongst local residents and invited anger from other members of the Fig family, not least from Fergus's brother Horatio, who's been nothing if not vocal about his objections. When interviewed, Horatio Fig described the plans as a load of bloody bollocks. Here's the rest of the article that was sent to me. Disley Ferret Murdered The director of Figgington's controversial new theme park, Disneyland, was found murdered the day before the grand opening. He was discovered dressed up as the park's mascot, the Disley Ferret. However, police are still searching for the missing head of the costume, as they believe it may help lead them to the head of the director, which was also missing. As most readers will be aware, the park's director was none other than Fergus Fig, and police suspect foul play within the ranks of the Fig family itself. Is Fergus's brother Horatio now the prime suspect for his murder? Police are asking locals for any information leading to Horatio's whereabouts after he disappeared following a brief police interview on the night of the incident. No way! Murdered by his own brother! Actually, I can relate to that. I'm still not sure why this article was sent to me, though. I should... I'll add Fick Hall to my map. New evidence in murder case. The mystery of the Disley Ferret murder continues, but new evidence has now come to light and things are not looking good for Horatio Fig. Already the prime suspect, Horatio's prolonged disappearance only compounds his guilt. But as if that wasn't enough, new DNA evidence places Horatio at the crime scene and a subsequent search of Fig Hall has uncovered an antique duelling sword with Horatio's prints on the handle and Fergus's blood on the blade. Add in Horatio's famous temper, fondness for drink and overall instability and you don't have to be Nancy Drew to put the pieces together. There's now a substantial reward for any information leading to Horatio's capture. Figgington Parish Council have also agreed to erect a memorial statue to Fergus in the town centre, in recognition of the fact that he tried to put Figgington on the map for something other than witch burning. I better check out this statue and see what all the fuss is about. I'll add the town centre to my map. What would you like to do now? Goodbye, Edmund. It smells like dust and pensioners. Welcome to Fig Hall. Welcome to Fig Hall. It's the Fig family's official purple and green colours. Nice desk. Thank you. It has everything I need to manage all our members' needs. Can I take a look around? Sure. Do you have a membership card? My brother defiled my membership card. That's rotten luck. If you tell me your membership number, I can print off a temporary visitor pass for you. I can't remember my membership number. Sorry. You'll just have to try and remember it. I find that if I just lie back and work through things in my head, the answer reveals itself eventually. 
If it helps, they all begin with H.T. Can you tell me anything about the Fig Brothers? Esme is the expert on that sort of thing. Bye. Goodbye. I feel like I've seen one of these before. Her name tag says Esme. I'm watching you. Hello, Esme. Welcome to Fig Hall. Oh, it's nice to see young folk taking an interest in local history. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers? Uh, if you've not got a visitor pass, I'm afraid I'm not authorised to tell you anything. What are you doing? Watching. What exactly are you watching? The rooms, my dear. I'm an official room watcher. Do the rooms do anything worth watching? Not on my watch, they don't. No ice creams dropped on the floor. No lost pensioners. No missed opportunities to show off the secret pre-stole. And no antique vases going walkabouts. Not while Esme Duckworth's on the case. Take that, Marjorie. Who's Marjorie? <laughs> you mean who was Marjorie? She turned her back on her room to eat a curly whirly. And when she looked back, one of the fig family's antique vases had been stolen. She was out of here quicker than you can say. Marjorie, you're fired for eating a curly whirly and taking your eyes off the room while someone stole the antique vase. Wow, you really take this room watching seriously. The Heritage Trust is a very serious organisation. They spent a lot of money getting hold of this place, although they never managed to get control over the old estate. Oh, one of the Fig Twins refused to sell it. The Fig Twins? Oh, yes. Didn't you know? Oh, I've said too much. Get a visitor pass and I'll tell you all I know. Where can a visitor pass? Are you a member of the Heritage Trust? I am, but Lloyd used my membership card to scrape his hamster off our driveway. And I've already created one fake ID today. That's okay, dear. Just pop over to the desk and tell them your membership number. They'll print you off a temporary visitor's pass. Bye. Come again. By the way, I heard the village fate is opening on the church grounds about now. They have a goosey wallop stall. That's always worth a visit. Thanks. Now what kind of moronic little twerp could have done this? I blame the parents. Derek O'Rean lived here 1985 to 1885. It's rubbish. There's litter all over the place. I'll put it all in the bin where it belongs. If this were... He's pricing up a load of drinks. Hi there. Yarp. With your head? My mum ate too many jelly babies while pregnant. And now I'm super flexible. I'm not sure that's how human development works. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know about that. No, I guess you wouldn't. What are you doing? These bottles have expired, so I'm reducing them. What's in the bottles? Orange flavoured fruity shooties. These ones are really old, but they've not updated the packaging in years. Same old bottles. How much are you reducing the drinks by? The boss said to make them 50% off, but I think that's way too cheap. 
So I've set them to 100% off instead. What great initiative. I'm sure your boss will be delighted. You'd think so, but he says I don't really have a head for business. You don't say. You're a dab hand with that pricing gun. I know, right? I don't even need to look while I do it. Bam, price it up. Bam, reload. Bam, price it up again. Bam, reload. Bam, price it up again. Bam. Yeah, I get the picture. All without even looking. Let's hope you never get your hands on a real firearm. Bam. God help us all. Bye. Catch you later. Um, excuse me. Oh, what do you want? Do you know where I can find a statue of Fergus Fig? The only statue I know about is at the other end of this street. You mean the street you're blocking? Do you see any other streets around here? Please, could I get past? I am trying to feed an hungry child. Get some perspective. I'm sure there's room if you just move a bit to your left. There's a perfectly good road right there. I'd rather not. The council seemed to have installed a rather large crack in it. Then I guess you're stuck, aren't you? You're dropping blueberries all over the pavement. Oh no! Call the police! What are you feeding her? She only eats blueberry muffins. Delicious! I've heard blueberries are a superfood. Yeah, well they're super annoying to pick out. She only likes the cakey bits. Couldn't you just buy a plain muffin and save yourself the hassle? You don't have a lot of experience negotiating with toddlers, do you? Is it still a blueberry muffin if the blueberries are all over the pavement? I didn't say she likes blueberries. Just blueberry muffins. Right, of course, but if you could just see your way to... I ain't moving until she's finished her muffin. How long does that normally last? Her previous record is 80 minutes. Is there any way to speed things up at all? You could be a good citizen and get her a drink. What does she like? She's two. What do you think? Water? <laughs> Are you bloody joking? She drinks a fruity shooties like any self-respecting toddler. Right. Bubblegum flavour is her favourite. Naturally. Bye. <laughs> Day, Mr. Shopkeeper, sir? No, it really isn't. What's so bad about today? Well, let's see now. First, I arrive at work and discover some little git has graffitied my shop. Next, I discover a whole crate of expired products in the back which should have been sold months ago. I then have to spend the entire morning explaining how to use a pricing gun to Clint flipping eastward over there. And now an annoying squirt in dungarees is asking me pointless questions and threatening to knock over all my stock with her inexplicably massive pigtails. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers? Isn't that a video game? I can see this isn't going to be one of those quest-furthering conversations. Maybe you're just not asking the right questions. Okay then, have you got any hints? Yeah, try not to knock anything over with that ridiculous hair. Thanks, you're a great help. I'd like a bubblegum fruity shooty, please. You have expensive taste. They're in the fridge. Bye. Come again. Or don't. Makes no odds to me.
I'll just take one. Whoa, these things are expensive. I wonder if he'll notice. Don't mind if I do. This one's a hundred percent off. Can I take it? Oh, Gordon Bennett, not again. Fine, take it. Thanks. I found this. What capture? Now, out my way. Are you welcome? And I'm sure someone else will pick up your mess. I don't even know who I'm talking to. She's long gone. Well, if no one else wants them. The ferret's head. I wonder what kind of food one can expect from an establishment like this. It's not open yet. A veritable treasure trove of stuff other people don't want. Figgington Secondary's finest crimpoline neckwear. Purple and green are the official colours of the Fig family. It's full of old video games. Panic the Hedgehog, Cul-de-Sac Fighter 2 and 76 copies of Mist. The Chart Show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. A lady bought them in a few weeks ago. Apparently her ex-husband used to record music off a local radio show every week for years. Never paid for music in his life. She tried to give us his hi-fi too, but the pause button was completely worn out. So I've been listening to them on my Talkman instead. Weasel attacks. It's an old promotional map showing the location of the theme park. Looks like when it was demolished, our house was built on top of it. Unsurprisingly, that's where the weasels are having a bad time at the hands of my mother. Nice cap. Thanks. It's made of genuine fake weasel fur. Do you really love weasels? No, but volunteering looks good on my CV. What's the map on the wall? We use it to plot weasel-related incidents in the local area. What kind of weasel incidents? It used to just be the odd bit of roadkill or accidental stampings, but recently we've been seeing a more creative approach. Everything from garrot wire to landmines. You wouldn't know anything about it, would you? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. That was a suspiciously evasive response. Anything new? No, none of it's new. Although we have got a nice bucket of odds and sods by the counter. Bye. See ya. Make a donation and help yourself to an item in this bucket. The Iron Maiden Deluxe Heavy Metal Detector. Bring your quarters to the slaughter or double your nickel back. It's yours if you want to make a donation. For the weasels. Thank you. Please. Free random object? Yes, please. There's a plaque in front of it. Fergus Fig. This monument was erected to commemorate the founder of Figgington's first and only tourist attraction, Disneyland. This vending machine was relocated from the theme park before the site was redeveloped into one of Figgington's enviable housing estates. The statue depicts Fergus Fig at the moment of his dignified demise, headless and dressed as a ferret. This machine must be ten years old now. Vend for yourself. This machine is calibrated to accept 10 gram nickel theme park tokens only. 
Well, that's just brilliant. I bet they're all long gone and buried with the theme park itself. It's full of fuzzy duck toys. They remind me of the ducklings I used to feed in the park. They'd get a whiff of the bread in my pocket and just go into a frenzy. It can detect different metal. It's an old token from the theme park. Nice, but it needs more sweet corn. I wonder if it still works. I guess that answers that question. It'd be a crime not to. Looks like they've managed to install localised rain for this year's event. That's considerate. Hello there. Hey up, fancy a wallop. How much is it for a wallop? One shiny brass pound for three wallops. I don't have any money. Then I suppose you need to find some if you want to wallop a goose anytime soon. Bye. Come back if you fancy a wallop. Jam. Oh, hello there. You startled me. I've had a terrible headache recently. I think it's probably due to the church bells. There's a gang of tits stealing your congregation's stuff. Sadly, I know. Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do. But if you ring the large bell, their ill-gotten gains will fall off the roof. Thanks. I really could have done with that advice earlier. Can you tell me anything about the Fig Brothers? The Figs? Well, one of the Fig Twins was a lovely, quiet fellow. Wait, they were twins too? Oh yes, I christened them both on the same day. Horatio, on the other hand, was a bit unstable. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. But I'm not here to talk about work. I have jam to inspect. You're inspecting jam? That's right. I'm judging these preserves to find a winner. There are prizes for jam? Oh, yes. Only an audience with TV baking legend Paula Holyrood and a signed copy of her new book, Bread is breast. <laughs> I mean best. Are you okay? Oh yes, I'm a huge fan of her. B -b 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 -bre Bread? Mm, that too. That book sounds like just the kind of inspiration I need. What do you have to do to win the jam competition? Anyone can enter. You just need to bring a jar with sweet flavour. Vibrant colour and perfectly preserved fruit. Bye! B -b -b bye! Bye! <laughs> Looks like the vicar's already polished this one off. Okay. A beautiful lace doily. The sign says, Ask me about hair of the dog. As if I didn't have enough nightmares already. Wow, the bar is low this year. Reserved for Miss Holyrood. A 
sorted case files. Uh, no touching. If you want to see inside it, you'll have to bid for it. These blueberries look more like greyberries. I need to give them some of the colour back first. Let's get some blue back into these berries. Lovely. All plump blue and pine scented. In you go. This should pep those berries up a bit. This should make it taste a bit sweeter. OK, I'm happy with my effort. I wonder if it would stand a chance in the Village Fates Jam competition. to my special jam into the competition? Of course. The more the merrier. Thank you. My name's Lucy... Uh, Lloyd. Nice to meet you, Lucy Lloyd. My heavens! How utterly divine! The bluest blueberries, a hint of fresh pine, and my headache is gone. First prize goes to Lucy Lloyd. Well done. Uh oh. I feel sorry for that portaloo outside. Yay! I won. I do hope the vicar's okay. It's not sentient. Hello. Ah, another fan. Yeah, I never miss an episode of Great British Cake Off. Of course you don't, darling. Did you see what happened to the vicar? He was covered in purple gunge. And locking himself in the portal when I arrived. Did I miss something? Actually, it's probably best that you don't know. Can I have a copy of your book? Oh, no, sweetie. This copy's reserved for the winner of the jam competition. I won the jam competition. You'll have to prove it if you want a copy of my book. Signed copies are very desirable. So, who are you exactly? Don't pretend you don't know. I am the Queen of Baps, the Baroness of Brioche, the Dame of Dampfnoodle. I make bread on the television, love. Bye. Goodbye. Look, I won the jam competition. Well, aren't you a clever girl? Does your mother bake? Does pouring napalm down rabbit holes count? I'm sorry. Nothing. I'm uh, uh, self-taught. Well, it sounds like your jam absolutely killed them out there today, honey. Here's your prize. I hope it inspires you to keep on baking. That's probably not a brilliant idea, but thank you. There we go. Okay.
Wow, that did a lot. I wonder what will happen if I turn it back again. Wow, you got big, Mr. Duck. It looks like that baking book has delivered on inspiration. But is there anything here that can help me with that monster in my nightmare? Hey, you're friendly, aren't you? There's a strong westerly breeze. Welcome to Bachester, home of the love bun. Please knock. It's got a hatch in it for answering riddles and such. What do you want? What is this place? Welcome, traveller. You have found yourself on the steps of the illustrious city of Bapchester. There aren't any steps. You're instantly unlikable. You know that. Why is it so windy here? It's me. The weather is out of our control. I'd like to come in. Oh, they all do. Then they all try to steal the secret recipe from our famous love bombs. The Grand High Batmaster put me in charge of this mighty gate. It won't be easy to get past me. Let me guess. I have to answer a riddle. Smart ass. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Here's my riddle. Two brothers are arguing. One loses his head completely, and the other one runs away. What colour stripes were their matching ties? Green and... Purple. Bugger. I suppose I have to let you in now. Just you. Your pet will have to stay outside. Last time we let one of his type in, he ate four local landmarks and then shat in the square. That's why you shouldn't give them bread. He guards the city with obscure questions. Don't take the piss. They're swapping stickers. Panini, stickers, cards and action figures. He looks pretty hard-nosed. The name is a pan... Oh, the name's Panini. Purveyor of fine stickers, trading cards and figurines. Do you know anything about the Bapchester love buns? Yes, stay away from them. Really? Why? I almost lost everything I had because of those bloody things. How? They bring out my worst side. They make you aggressive? Worse, they make me generous. I ate a whole packet of them one morning and spent the rest of the day giving away all my bloody stock. Never again. I'd like some stickers, please. Oh, I bet you would. Only you don't look particularly... solvent. How do you intend to pay? Uh. Thought so. As luck would have it, I have some free beginner packs to get people hooked. <clears throat> I mean, started. Here you go. Take some of these model paints, too. That's very kind of you. Oh yeah, I'm all hot. Nice stickers. Thanks. It's the reflective silver ones that everyone wants. But you usually have to trade your way up to those. Nice figures. Thanks. Each one is handcrafted from a solid block of sugar. They're incredibly durable. Just keep them out of the way of the rain, ants and fire. 
Fire. Yeah, sugar burns at a ridiculously high temperature. I learned that the hard way. I used to have a full head of hair. Goodbye. Yep. It's a poster for a troll boy band with tall hair. Those are me four brothers. They're leaving me to go on their world tour. Why aren't you in the band? I used to be. A few years back, hair like mine was all the rage. Everyone wanted to see our floppy curtains bouncing about in the spotlights. But then everything changed. Soft, yielding hair was out and stiff, rigid hair was the only thing the fans cared about. The taller, the better. It looks like your brothers all managed to change their hair. Should they do it with industrial hair gel? But I can't use it. It brings me out in a rash. They have international stardom, and all I have is a cold metal pole to lean on. And it's not even my pole. Is there any other way you could achieve the tall hair look? Tried everything I can think of. Maybe modern science will find a way. But until then I'm going nowhere. If I could help you achieve taller hair, what's in it for me? I know what you're getting at. You'd have to valuable stickers, right? Uh. Tell you what, I have a pretty rare one in me back pocket. And it's all yours if you can help me out with me floppy do. That's better than nothing, I suppose. Goodbye. See you later. What's wrong? <laughs> My kite's got a hole in it. That's a kite. It looks more like a slice of bread. It is a slice of bread. But when the wind's this strong, it can still fly pretty well. When it doesn't have a hole in it. Can I help? If you can find a way to fix my kite, I'll show you how well it flies. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nah, it's got... I reckon this might fix it. Hey, that's caught the wind pretty well. Thank you. I can make it go even higher too. Just ask and I'll show you. go higher? Let me see. I just need to be careful of the overhead wires. If the wind changes direction, they can get caught. I'll let it out a bit. Goodbye. Goodbye. It looks complicated. It's an invention of my own making. Static electricity is generated making it spin around. A real time saver in the kitchen. I call it the self-electrifying danger bowl. Sell a lot of them, do you? Marketing is my strong suit. It's like the plasma ball in my bedroom, but bigger. They're plasma flies. I only keep them around because they make my lab look more impressive. You remind me of someone. I'm a figment of your imagination. What did you expect? Hello. Greetings from the world of beyond. You mean this insane excuse for a dream? I mean science. Is the self-electrifying danger ball dangerous? Not really. It's just a name. All of the excess electrical charge is redirected up to that metal ball at the top. If you touch that, you'd get a bit of a shock. Which is why I try to keep it away from anything conductive. Although to be honest, even if I do touch it, it just makes my hair and beard stick up in the air. I'd better go now. Don't stop believing. Poor. Smells of freshly baked bread in here. 
It bakes bread and heats the room. It's only putting out a low heat at the moment. It's keeping the delicious bready smell trapped inside. Ooh, free samples. I'll take one. It looks like some kind of high-tech security system. Hey! Keep away from me, oven! Sorry, I didn't think you were watching. Well, I was, so leave it alone. I don't want it getting too hot in here. It smells lovely in here. It does, doesn't it? It's my most powerful marketing tool. If I need to increase sales, I just crack open the window and let the smell out. Customers can smell it for miles around. Why don't you just leave the window open all the time? Were you born in a barn? It's too bloody windy out there. Do you make the love buns? That is the responsibility of the Grand High Bapmaster. That's me. The recipe is a closely guarded secret passed down from Bapmaster to Bapmaster. What's the secret recipe? Really? You think it's going to be that simple? Are the love buns powerful enough to work on terrifying nightmare monsters? That's quite specific. But I don't see why not. If the bun was large enough, the ones I sell are only big enough for the local trolls. Couldn't you make a larger one for me? I could. But I'm not going to. It would use up all of my love bun starter. What the hell was that? I didn't hear anything. What's a love bun starter? It's a living sourdough mix that I use as the base for all of my love buns. Then I add a few simple ingredients to it, which makes them work perfectly on trolls. Do they only work on trolls? My recipe only works on trolls, but it could be adjusted to work on just about anything. OK, come on, you must have heard it that time. I don't know what you're talking about. Could you open the window? Only when I'm ready to lure in more customers. Or if it gets too hot in here. Bye. Toodaloo. Nice oven. It's precisely calibrated to the correct temperature. Even the slightest change to the settings or fuel makes a huge difference. So don't muck about with it. Bye. Toodaloo. It looks like some kind of high-tech security system. Give this bun a makeover. What a work of art. I got you this. It's not a love bun, is it? No, it looks nothing like a love bun because it isn't one. Fine, give it here then. Oh, that feels nice. It makes me feel all generous and compassionate. <laughs> I don't think I can afford them. Oh, don't say that. It makes me feel awful. Look, don't tell anyone, but you can have that one there for nothing if you like. Go on, off you go. Don't say Panini never did anything for you. Thanks. Here, you can have these paints back. I won't need them. Amazingly versatile.
Sushi, look. Okay. Whoa, what great lift. Wait for me, brothers. I'm coming on tour. Here, take this. I will need it when I'm going. I think I'll turn it off now. find a yeast man. I'll train it for your batter cat. Hey, don't try to rip her off. Oh, fine. Here, I'll train my man at bombs. That's more like it. Is that your sister? What? Enjoying your stickers? Hmm? Shall I just leave you alone then? Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Yeah. Hmm, I think everyone around here already has one of those. You might have to go further afield to trade it. This counts as inspiration. I'll take... It looks kind of spongy. Mind if I take this? Go for it. The owner just left it here. Just don't expect it to keep you dry. How do you mean? It's designed specifically for bog-dwelling organisms. The material's made out of sphagnum moss to collect rainwater, not dispel it. You mean it soaks up rain? Yep. Just don't want it? It may be useless, but it's free. I'm having it. That's the spirit. Hi again. Hey, great set earlier. Thanks. Where's everybody gone? They all left after your set. I'm just cleaning up before I knock off myself. Isn't that the same glass you were polishing before? Yeah, I can't get it off. Do you need a hand? Nah, I'm sure it'll come off eventually. You just go about your quest. Do you collect he -nan stickers too? Of course, doesn't everyone? What stickers are you after? I only need one more to complete my set. Man of arms. Bye. See ya. Hey, is that man of arms? I'd love to trade him for my evil breath sticker. Here you go. we go. I only need one to complete my set, and it's not that one. Trade it for my favourite Komoto sticker! Eek. 
ist das so cool? Oh, so. Hier, take my pride and joy. The silver skeletal tiddler. Take good care of him for me. I can't while the Batmaster's watching. I could do with someone's help to distract her. What do you think of this place? I have literally no idea what's happening. One minute I'm hanging from a rope in a nightclub, and the next I'm surrounded by giant pastries. It's all getting a little much if I'm being brutally honest. Could you distract her for me? <sighs> what do you want me to do? I don't know. Think of something devilishly clever. Fine. Hang on. Excuse me. <laughs> sure, what do you want to know? So, the, I was thinking. Yes, what about? I That's was not, a, I'm not even wondering sure what this machine how you does. feel about being distracted. I try not to. Keep away from me, oven. You have an alarm on your oven? Damn right. And not just any alarm. The Bread Defender Elite. The built-in laser trigger is set off when the beam is broken. I installed it after I had a break-in. Stolen love buns flooded the black market and inadvertently caused the Great Troll Orgy of 93. That sounds like something best avoided. Could you distract her for me again? Excuse Sure, what do you want to know? So, the, I was thinking. Let's yes, see if what I about? can trick the laser with I a reflective was, uh, sticker. Wondering how you feel about Hopefully being distracted. Stop the alarm going off. I try not to. If I'm not paying proper attention, what shall I put people in? might try to take advantage. Nice chat, but I've got better to keep do. Things up a bit. Don't let me keep you. Oh, oh, I think I'll have to open the window. That's a bit better. that everyone made it out alive. The doorway is completely blocked off. It looks like the smell of the bread was too much for our web-footed friend. Miraculously, it looks like it might still work if I can get it lit. They're really soggy. HT70705 Hey, that's my Heritage Trust membership number. I knew it would come back to me eventually. Strong bread flour. Okay. They look very impressive. I can't catch them with my bare hands. That door was not duck proof. He's going to have the bread sweats tonight. I don't know how he can sleep with all that dry splintered wood underneath him. I don't want to get any closer. 
Evelyn. I don't want to aggravate it. <laughs> Top secret recipe. Makes 13 love buns. Ingredients. Sourdough starter. One cup. Mm. Strong bread flour. One large bag. Mucus from intended recipient. Approximately 300 mils. Method. Feed flour a mucus from intended recipient to starter until it calms the hell down. Bang it in a hot oven for 30 minutes. Sit down with a nice cup of tea. Optional. Sounds simple enough. Lunch time. I think it needs a drink now. Okay, let's give this a go. Lovely. An umbrella full of monster drool. There we go. Okay. It's empty now. It's stopped raining finally. At least all the bread will have dried out. I'll just take one. Time for a drink. I calmed it down. I can probably pick it up now. Okay. I suppose it was a reading light back when this place used to have walls. Okay. You never know when you might need a splinter. Okay. There we go. Perfect for baking. Ready, steady, bake. It's done. And it doesn't look too bad, all things considered. Take this!
I think I prefer the drooling monster to drowning. Against my better judgement, let's see what the psychology book says now. Chapter 3. Take a break. Reach out and grab every opportunity. Take inspiration from relaxing times in your past. Close your eyes and transport yourself back to a childhood holiday. Or activities with your family and loved ones. We did occasionally visit somewhere near the sea. Mainly so Mum could practice her harpooning. All I remember is hundreds of crabs on the beach. Nice chips though. Not while I'm in my pyjamas. I think my membership number is HT70705. Let me just check that for you. Here we are. Lucy, is it? Yep, that's me. Well remembered. Okay, dokie. Let's print you out a visitor pass. There you go. Enjoy Thick Hall! I can't wait! Okay! I've got a visitor pass! Oh, jolly good! What would you like to know? Am I permitted into the cafe now? Of course! Go right on through! What can you tell me about Horatio Fig? Horatio, you say? Fig always his home until he fled town and it was repossessed ten years ago. The Heritage Trust purchased it a few years later, but hardly anything had changed since the day he left. Uh, apart from the cafe. And the car park. Uh, and, and the shop. And the adventure playground. Did his brother Fergus live here too? No, not after their parents died. Horatio inherited the all, and Fergus got the rest of the family's land. That was what caused all the problems. Horatio never agreed with his brother's theme park. Thought it was an abomination to build something like that on the family estate. So he killed him? Well, the evidence certainly pointed that way. And after being interviewed by the police, he emptied the family vault and fled town. Sounds like the actions of a guilty man to me. What can you tell me about Fergus Fig? Ah, poor Fergus. He was a sweet boy, really. Young at heart. Nothing like his twin. I know what that's like. You know, I really think this whole theme park idea could have been good for this town. Such a shame. Do you know what happened on the night he was murdered? No one knows for sure. The police got an anonymous tip-off about the murder. What happened to Horatio and Fergus's parents? Ah, uh, a tragic set of circumstances. According to my sources, their mother Lucille Fig died of consumption. Quite literally, in fact. She was eaten by one of the family's pet leopards. Sadly, their father, Archibald Fig, met his demise at his wife's funeral. At the wake, he unexpectedly choked on a piece of swan and couldn't be revived. The old family had a rather odd relationship with animals. That probably explains the theme park and ferret costumes. <laughs> oh, fruitcakes, a lot of them. Where can I find out more about the murder? Hmm. The chief of police at the time retired a few years ago. He spent years trying to track Horatio down. 
It was his obsession. And it took a toll on his marriage. He ended up moving to the other side of the world. Australia? Hull. I don't fancy a trip to Hull. I don't blame you. You could try talking to the arresting officer instead. A nice young American chap. He arrived in Figgington ten years ago with an head full of dreams. I know what that's like. He left the force last year to follow his lifelong ambition to be a dining critic. He might be able to point you in the right direction. Perfect. Where can I find him? Do you know the Ferris Head pub in the town centre? It should be opening for lunch about now and he never misses a chance to critique their pie of the day. Thank you. I'll see if I can track him down. Bye. Goodbye, dear. Hang on. I remember something else. That was... odd. It's no wonder I've been having nightmares with all this buried in my brain. I definitely need to get to the bottom of what happened ten years ago. Phew! Look at that queue! I think she's eyeing up that last slice of fruitcake. Good luck! I think he's actually gone to sleep. Great queuing! Just look at that posture! Prime queue position! She must have got here early. She looks busy at the moment. Horatio and Fergus settling a brotherly dispute with a duel, taken moments before Fergus was stabbed in the groin. A 40-year-old photo of the fireplace next door. like a pointy cat with big teeth. Hey girl! <coughs> I have a happier soul now, but a smell of your hand. A pint of your finest ale please barkeep. That ain't gonna happen. But I have a library card to prove I'm old enough, look. According to that, you're 76 years old. And a man. And dead. So, you're either an underage girl with appalling forgery skills, or a septuagenarian zombie. Either way, you can jog on. Is that a no then? Sharp as a tack you are. Who's the guy with the... Dog? Oh, don't mind him. That's just Curly the caretaker. Don't worry, he can't hear us. He's completely deaf. He worked as a caretaker at that theme park for all of about half an hour. He's the one who discovered the owner's body on the opening night. Works at the local school now, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't recognise him without his plunger. The kids at the school tease him something chronic, but he's got thick skin. That's good. At least it doesn't bother him. No, I mean, literally, he has incredibly thick skin. Hands like falconer's gauntlets. Face like a leather knapsack. Poor guy. No idea where he got the dog, though. He feeds it on pork scratchings. Lucky for me, no one else has teeth strong enough to eat them. Who's the guy with the laptop? He used to work for the police, but now he writes reviews on the parish council's blog. I never read him, though. I don't need some incomer telling me how to think. With his out-of-town taste buds and his fancy foreign wordlage. Bye! Bye then. By the way, don't miss our live music extravaganza later today. Ooh, what sort of music? Grungy grime. You're hosting a live grungy grime extravaganza? Sorry, no, I just noticed a bit of muck on the floor there. To be honest, I'm not really sure what the music will be like, but the chap has a big bushy beard, so it's bound to be good. 
that sound logic? Enjoying your lunch? I literally don't know how to describe it. Did you used to be a police officer? Back in a previous life. The name's Woody. I'm a dining critic now. I visit all the local eateries and review them for the parish council. Is that basically just this pub and the fake hall cafe? Wait, there's a cafe? Well, that's just doubled my workload. Why did you swap the police force for food? Back when I was younger, I trained hard to be accepted into the force. I learned combat, investigative skills, and was even captain of a small team. Yeah, but I never discovered the true secret of fitting in. Other officers were jealous of my achievements and wanted revenge. That's just the curse of success, I suppose. I had to escape, so I started a new career. That's the end of my tales from the police force. You never know. I may return to it one day, but I'm sure it's changed a lot since I left. Probably not as much as you'd think. Hmm, maybe. But I've found true happiness doesn't come from a shiny badge on your chest. It's found at the bottom of a bowl of delicious stew. The middle of a satisfying toasty. The topping on a hot crumble. Unfortunately, I'm yet to find any of those in this town. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers case? Right now, not a lot. I've got a deadline for the Figgington Parish Council's blog. If I don't get my pie of the day review written up soon, it'll be obsolete. What was in the pie? It's not so much about the feeling. I review the whole experience. The trouble is, recently I've been getting a lot of flack for my reviews. Our readership want their reviews written for locals, by locals. I've lived here for over 10 years, but I still haven't quite got the hang of the provincial dialect. I need to find regional words to put into my reviews, to make them sound more authentically local. What local words do you need? Uh, let me see. I need good local words for insipid, leathery, caustic. Sounds like you've had a roller coaster of a lunch. In a lot of ways, eating a roller coaster would have been less traumatic. Could you help me source some local expressions for my review? Then I'll tell you what I can about the case. Okay, fine. Where am I supposed to find these local words from? I don't know. Look around and chat to people, maybe? I'm not sure what some of those words even mean. Sorry, I need to write the rest of my review now. Maybe try a dictionary? Bye! Bye! It looks... robust. I bent my knife on the mash. Can you help me out with some local words? Well, so you can help Egon Ronnie over there slag off our pies? No chance. Bye! Bye then! Looking for some local words. You mean like loitering? I'll ask someone else. Bye. See ya. Hamilton. Shh. I'm looking for some local equivalents to normal words. Really? Like what? Insipid. I'm not sure, dear. Maybe a book would help you. Leathery. Hmm. Nothing sprung into mind. Caustic. Sorry, can't help you there. Never mind. 
Bye. Shh. Thanks for the tip off about the police officer. No problem. I hope he was helpful. That remains to be seen. I need some help with the local vernacular. Oh, go on. What's a good local word meaning insipid? I'm not sure, dear. You might have to ask someone else. How would a figging tonight describe something leathery? Oh, <laughs> like my husband. Harsh, but possibly, yeah. I'd call him Frank. That was marginally less helpful than I was hoping for. Do you know a local term for something caustic? Frank. Never mind. Bye. Are you any good on local terminology? What's that, young wimple snuffer? That's a yes, then. What's a good local word meaning insipid? I'm not sure what that means. Have you got a dictionary? Actually, I do. It says it's something weak, tasteless and lacking flavour. I see. Weak with no taste, eh? Sounds just like the cafe's herbal tea selection to me. Why don't you ask the dinner lady next door? Uh, thanks. What about leathery? Any ideas there? Hmm, not really. I need a local term to describe something caustic. I've lived a long life already, and that's never come up before. Sorry. Never mind. Bye. Do you know anything about the fig case? Unless you're talking about an actual case of actual figs. No. Can you help me with some local words? Only if you're ordering something, Duck. What should I order? It's more than my job's worth to start recommending anything in this place. I hear you offer a selection of herbal teas. We do, but no one ever orders them. They taste slightly less exciting than hot water. Proper night cock, if you ask me. Come again? Night cock. You know, weak, with bugger all flavour. Great word, thank you. Do you want any tea or not? Er, uh, no. Thanks anyway. Bye. See you later. Having fun in there? Just don't. The vicar really did a number on this toilet. There's weird purple goo everywhere and it won't go off. That scrubbing looks like hard work. It's awful. This purple stuff won't come off however hard I scrub. The problem is these cheap council issue cleaning products. I need something more caustic to get this off. What kind of cleaner do you need? Something. Anything. As long as it's caustic enough to get this shite off. Can you help me out with some local words? Sure, whatever. Once I get this weird purple stuff cleaned off. God, it smells horrible. Bye. Hello. I'm looking for some local words. Sorry, I'm not from round here. Bye. Goodbye. He's working those wings with some fine scrubbing. Hello again. Wow, this day just keeps getting better. What do you want now? some local words. Well, there are plenty sprayed all over me shop walls. What are you doing? What does it look like? 
removing my brother's handiwork? What? Not funny. I'm trying to get this bloody graffiti off the front of his shop. At least it's only a short name. Oh, this is just the tip of the filth bag. Some little scrotes broke in through my storeroom window and scribbled all over me walls. It's going to take me hours to get it all off. Cool. Can I go in and take a look? Whatever, just don't nick anything. I've left Dirty Harry in charge. What are you using to get the graffiti on? Bubblegum fruity shooty. Figures. Mind if I borrow your fruity shooty? What the hell for? I know someone who needs a good corrosive cleaner. Well, there's none better than this stuff. Take it, I've got loads more in the shop anyway. Thanks. I'm getting through a lot of these today. Can I have a lolly? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure what the boss would say about that. Your boss said I could go and have a look at the storeroom. Cool, if he said it was okay, I believe you. In charge at last, I see. I knew my time would come. Just don't go giving stuff away, that's what he said. Pfft, do I look like a complete idiot? also said I could have a free lolly too. Oh really? Is that right? Well if the boss said so, why don't you just help yourself? Uh. Sorry, did that come across as sarcastic? Seriously, just take one if you want it. Very trusting, aren't you? Oh, I think I'm clever enough to spot a dishonest customer when I see one. Can you help me with some local words? Words aren't really my thing. I'm a man of action. How did your boss like your new pricing structure? He wasn't keen, bless him. I don't think he's great at numberology. My sister is a spongoose. Hmm, I recognise that handwriting. Flump the police. This shop smells like wee. Can't argue with that. Brian hates tits. He probably hates people who steal cameras too by now. Ah, genuine dead rat pelts. The shopkeeper sure knows how to cover up in style. There's even more graffiti behind it. Poor little things must be starving. Wow, they made short work of that. Curly has a face like a crumplish swan anus. Judging by what the pub landlord said about Curly's face, I guess crumplish must mean thick and leathery. I love a good local adjective. I must remember to tell Woody about it. Go, girl. Can you get through this? <laughs> Lovely. A small badge covered in drool and bits of lolly. Probably a good thing she didn't swallow it. I earned this badge for breaking into a lolly. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here, try this. I have it on good authority that it's the most caustic cleaner around. Thanks, I'll give it a try. Wow, this stuff's so grunchous. I'll have it sparkling in no time. Grunchous? Yeah, corrosive whilst at the same time disconcertingly sweet. Good word, thanks. A new word for you. Great, let's hear it. Napcock. Apparently, it means something weak and tasteless. Ooh, great, that describes the sauce perfectly. Crumplish. I think it means thick and leathery, and also possibly like a swan's anus. Oh, good work. That'll describe the texture perfectly. I must remember to never eat here. Grunctious. It means corrosive yet disconcertingly sweet. That is exactly the feeling I have in my mouth right now. Nice. Right. Let's get this published to the blog. Done. Okay. What do you need to know? Can you tell me about the Fig Brothers case now? Oh, sure. It all started ten years ago. It was my first week on the force when we got an anonymous tip-off about the body. <coughs> we brought the victim's brother in for questioning, but had to let him go due to a lack of evidence. That night, he skipped town. And when we searched the hall, he'd hidden an antique sword with his fingerprints on the hilt and Fergus's blood on the blade. Then there were the DNA traces found at the scene. It was pretty compelling, I suppose, and the chief was convinced that he'd done it. What do you think? This was something the chief and I argued over. Something just didn't add up. When we interviewed him, he seemed in complete shock and apparently gave us another lead. But his interview cassette went missing, and the chief was convinced of his guilt. That's all irrelevant now, anyway. They dispose of old case files after ten years, so any possible leads will be gone, too. Is there any way I could get hold of one of those case files? I could do with getting to the bottom of this. Actually, I... I think they're running an auction at the village fate today. They're probably selling some old kitten evidence. You never know. You might get lucky. Great, thank you. What can you tell me about the police chief? Uh, he moved away recently after splitting up with his wife. You ask me? It was his obsession with this case that pushed them apart. She's still around. I saw her walk past carrying a box of his old things a few weeks ago. No idea where he is now. Could be on the other side of the world. Bye. He's filling in a competition form. What are you doing? I'm entering a competition in this kid's magazine. The grand prize is a lifetime supply of fish and chips. What does a lifetime supply of fish and chips even look like? I don't know. I don't even like fish. But I can't resist a competition. What do you have to do? It's for kids, really. You need to name your favourite chip toppings. How many have you got so far? Two. Salt and vinegar. Does that count as two? I'm not sure, but I need at least six more and my mind's gone blank. In my day, I used to enjoy a nice bit of tripe on my chips. I don't know what kids today are into. You're the youngest person I've seen in here by about 40 years. Can you remember any? The only time I ever had fish and chips was on holiday. I'll have a think and see if I can remember any. Anything new? No, none of it's new. But there have been some more weasel incidents added to the map this week. Bye. See ya. The chart show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. I'll take a look. Oi, don't touch anything. I was only looking. That may well be the case, but I can't watch the shop and fill in this competition at the same time. So in the meantime, just keep your wandering fingers to yourself. You could just put it down while there's a customer in the shop. 
Oh, so you're planning to buy something now, are you? Er. Uh... Just leave everything alone until I'm done. Just take a seat when you're ready and start bidding. The minimum bid is a pound, though. What should I do if I don't have enough money? Maybe you're better off playing Goosey Wallop. I thought you had to pay for Goose Walloping. Apparently there was an incident and now it's free wallops all round. Good to know. Thanks. Did you ever work with the old police chief? Briefly. He left a couple of months after I joined the force. Did he ever mention anything about the Fig Brothers case? Oh, we never mentioned that case around him. He had an obsessive nature. If he knew what was good for you, he'd keep the conversation light. You know, the weather or pop music or something. He never missed the chart show on the radio. He used to record it religiously onto meticulously labelled cassettes every week. I remember one time he couldn't find a blank cassette at home and almost had a meltdown. He even came into work after hours asking everyone if they had one he could use. See what I mean? Obsessive about pretty much everything. None of us were entirely surprised when his wife left him, to be honest. She gave boxes of his stuff to charity after they split up. But what about the Fig Brothers? Like I said, we all avoided talking about it. Didn't want to trigger him. Bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. did the toilet cleaning go? Oh, pink gruncher stuff worked like a charm, thanks. Please, can I have a go? Go for it. It's free now, anyway. How come it's free? We were charging a pound a go, but some old dear wanted a turn and dropped her purse in the mud. Then the cash all fell out of her purse. Then she slipped and fell on top of the cash. Then the mallet slipped and fell on top of her. I stopped charging in case she tried to sue us or something. The vicar's looking after her now, although I'm not sure who's looking after him. What money did she drop? No idea. The tits came and picked up most of it. Anything else will be under all this mud. If you see her, tell her not to sue me, alright? Bye! Come back if you fancy a wallop. at the goosey wallop stall dropped a ruddy grey mallet on me. Maybe he thought you were a goose. I used to be a champion walloper in my day. I went down to the fay to show that goose what for. But I dropped my purse. I slipped in the mud and the lights went out. Bloody steward. What money did you drop? Not a lot. Just a bit of brass. Brass? You know, pound coins. I wouldn't mind betting the tits have picked most of it up by now. I should sue that steward, you know, parading around like Timmy Bloody Mallet. The steward said not to sue him. I bet he did, little upstart. I think he's at least 50 years old. I knew him when he was in nappies. He was a silly little prat then, and he's an even bigger prat now. I'll tell him not to get his hopes up. Bye. How are you feeling? Like a jammy husk. Sorry about the jam. Oh, don't worry about it. I've not felt that close to God for years. Bye. Bye bye. It's he
Oh, I just found a pound. Right, is everybody ready for the auction to begin? I said, is everybody ready for the auction to begin? Oh, uh, yes. OK, first up is this fine semi-automatic rifle behind me. What am I bid? Ten pounds to start? Do I see ten at the back of the room? Five. Do I hear five? Three, then. Do I have three? Back in the room for two pounds. Ugh. One pound it is. I have a pound. Is that a bid from the young lady who presumably has a gun licence at the front? Um, no, I guess not. Fine. I'll just put it down as unsold, like everything else today. Right. Last item. A large box containing all the evidence from the Fergus Fig murder investigation. <sighs> Shall we just dispense with the theatre this time? What have you got? One pound. <sighs> I suppose it'll buy me a twax bar at the shop. Going, going, gone. Sold to the young girl with the already bulging rucksack at the front for one pound. Yay! To say that today has been grossly unprofitable would be an understatement. <sighs> I'm going on a break. That'll be one pound, please. Thank you. Don't, you know, touch the guns and stuff, all right? I wouldn't dream of it. Not a girl. Right, let's have a rummage in that box. There's loads of stuff in here, all packed up. It's information that I'm after, though. Ah, here's the case file. Let's take a look inside. It looks like some of the pages are missing. It doesn't even tell me the date of the murder. It has the details of two crucial pieces of evidence, though. The DNA sample found at the scene and the sword with blood on the blade and fingerprints on the handle. I agree, it's pretty compelling. But something tells me there's more to it. It mentions Horatio's interview recorded on the night of the murder. Shame the interview cassette's not here, too. I bet that would shed some more light on the case. I wonder if I can discover what happened to it. Apparently, the DNA sample was hair retrieved from the fist of the victim. It looks like Fergus yanked a clump of it off his attacker. The DNA match to Horatio was 89%, with a 99.9% .9 likelihood that it belonged to a close blood relative or sibling. So it was definitely a close family member. I wonder if there's anyone else who fits the bill. I'll ask around. According to the coroner's report, the murder weapon was a sharp blade exactly like the one found hidden at Fig Hall. It appears that Horatio had attempted to hide it up the chimney. There's a photo of the scene and you can even see the dried blood on the blade. Forensic analysis confirmed Horatio's fingerprints on the hilt and that the blood was 100% match for his brother Fergus. This photo reminds me of one I've seen somewhere before. I suppose I might as well take a look. According to the plaque, this photo is almost 40 years old. Hang on a minute! There's the sword in the chimney, complete with the same dried blood spatter. If this photo is really 40 years old, what's it doing there 30 years before he even hid it? Unless it was actually hidden there decades before. And isn't the murder weapon at all? At least, 
not for this murder anyway. I wonder why someone hid a sword up there in the first place. I should go and tell the police officer about this. These vases look very familiar. There's only one of them in Fig Hall nowadays. Maybe I should ask Esme about them. It looks like there used to be a family tree hanging on the wall 40 years ago. It's too small to make out on the photograph though. I wonder if anyone knows what happened to the original. Horatio and Fergus settling a brotherly dispute with a duel, taken moments before Fergus was stabbed in the groin. Well, that explains the blood on the sword. I suppose the young Horatio was just trying to avoid getting into trouble. Did Horatio Fig have any other close family? Well, it's possible. Apart from Fergus, they were a pretty secretive bunch. There could have been an old herd of them living here for all we know. There was a family tree hanging on that back wall when the Heritage Trust first took over. Oh, but that was stolen at the same time as one of the antique vases. <sighs> no prizes for guessing who was on duty that day. Marjorie? Marjorie. They never even took a copy of it, so unless someone finds it, we'll never know. Where's the family tree now? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. It was stolen around the same time as that priceless vase went walkabouts. The photo in the other room shows a sword stuck up the chimney. Doesn't surprise me. There was all sorts of stuff here when the trust took over. Most of it had been here for decades. Covered in dust and cobwebs. I don't think Horatio did a scrap of dusting while he was living here. What happened to the other vase? It was stolen while Marjorie was on duty. Oh yeah, the curly whirly eater. Quite. It's probably found its way into the house of a wealthy collector by now. Bye. Oh, come again soon. It's good to see your continuing interest in local history. It's the same as the one at Fig Hall. Apparently, the other one was stolen at the same time as the Fig family tree. I guess we can add kleptomaniac to my mother's list of disturbing conditions. I wonder if it holds any clues. So, it was stolen at the same time as the family tree. I'll take a closer look. Oh, 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 there's a large piece of canvas rolled up inside. I can't get it out though. the poker will fit in the vase. I'll need to wrap it in something soft though. It's okay. I'm sure they used to be bigger. What can you tell me about Horatio's interview? Well, that was a long time ago, love. It was recorded on the night of the murder. When was that exactly? Look, I don't mean any offence, but could you just drop it? Leave the detecting to the detectorists. There's no need to lose any sleep over it. That's precisely my problem. I just know there's more to it than the case file suggests. What was the exact date of the murder? This case is closed. What if I could prove that the original evidence isn't strong enough to support the case? Then you'd tell me? There's something about this case. Brings out the obsessive nature in people. Something tells me there's more to it. 
I can't explain why. <sighs> Whatever. In the unlikely event, you can cast serious doubt on both pieces of evidence in the case that I'll throw all caution to the wind and tell you. Like it'll make any difference. I found some evidence. Which piece? The sword was hidden in Fig Hall Fireplace 30 years before the murder. Well, that sounds highly unlikely. Show me some proof. Like what? Photographic evidence is always nice. What evidence would you need me to debunk? Both of them. The DNA and the murder weapon. See ya. It's rubbish. I don't want to carry the bin around. if I took this. Yep. Plus, I have an alarm switch right under the counter. And Howard the receptionist does a mean pile driver. You can pick up a promotional pack for members at reception. I think there are some postcards in there. Thanks. Do you have a set of postcards for members? Oh, yes. And not only that, I'll even throw in a free branded tote bag containing promotional literature from our specially selected third-party partners. Joy. I know, right? Here you go. Thanks. Here, let me take that visitor pass, too. I recognize you anyway. some postcards and promotional junk in it. I'll take them out. The joy of crabs. Crabbing is an inspired pastime enjoyed for generations. Make the most of your trip to the seaside by luring crabs into a bucket with rashes of juicy, full-flavoured prime bat bacon. Create succulent memories with your family this summer. Created by the Guild of Bacon Marketeers. One of them shows the sword stuck up the fireplace, and the other shows the Fick brothers duelling 40 years ago. Good plan. I don't plan to do any toting anyway. This is going to take some serious care. I hope it's not just a receipt in there. Okay, here goes. Don't look. I am in so much trouble. Oh well, let's see what we've got. This is it. The Fig family tree. Why on earth did my mum nick all this stuff? I really worry about her sometimes. I can see Horatio and Fergus right at the bottom of the tree. But there's another name right next to Fergus. So they did have another sibling. I can just make out the words A fig, but the rest has been torn off. I guess they were even more of a black sheep than Horatio. I should show this to the police officer right away. Here you go. This photo was taken 40 years ago. You can clearly see the bloodstained sword in the fireplace and the other photo shows the two brothers duelling when they were younger. That's likely when the sword got covered in Fergus's blood. Okay, I'll buy that. 
Fair dues. You're not at all bad at this. Found anything about the DNA yet? Actually, yes. According to this family tree, Fergus and Horatio had another sibling with the initial A. The hair sample could have come from them. Hmm. That does cast doubt on the DNA evidence. Where are they now? Uh, I don't know. No one's told me anything about them. Now will you tell me the date of the murder? Okay, fair enough. The murder took place ten years ago this year. Yeah, I know that already. All right, keep your massive hair on. Did you know that the murder took place on the night the theme park was due to open? Yeah, I discovered that earlier too. Well, excuse me, Mr Holmes. So the exact date was... What? Oh, yeah. Sometime in June. The 26th, I think? OK, thanks. It feels nice when I get in and out of bed. OK, let's see what this one does for me. He's all better now. Seaside. That makes one of us. Looks like the tide's out. Feeling the nostalgia? Is that like nausea? No, it's that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when reminiscing about the past. Hey, no, I'm not feeling that. Bye. What are you doing? Oh, not good. My nozzle's clogged. No one wants that. What nozzle are we talking about exactly? It's the end of my oil thermometer. Without a clear nozzle, I can't get the oil to the right temperature. And there's no way I'm serving under right chips. Quite right, too. I'm looking for something that'll help me reach out and grab stuff. Well, don't look at me, love. Although people find plenty of stuff on the beach at low tide. Especially if you look under things. You should ask the sergeant. He hides away on a rock formation out in the bay. Oh yeah, I see it. Who's the sergeant? He's not really a sergeant. Well, obviously. He gave himself that title and likes to lord it about the place. That was until he almost got himself eaten. That brought him down a peg or two. Now he's in hiding and spends his time combing the beach. He collects all sorts of rubbish that the tide leaves behind. What kinds of sauces and condiments do you offer? Oh, anything you can remember. I suppose that stands to reason. I'll just look around for inspiration then. Bye. Have a good day. Salty. What's the red sauce? Oh, heck all that red sauce. Genius. It's a puddle of congealed brown. Who knows what it is? Actually, thinking about it, the owner of the chip van probably knows. What's that brown puddle over there? Gravy, but going on chips. Of course it is. Bye. Have a good day. Look 
something under there. Great, more brightly coloured litter. I don't think this will help me much with my nightmare, but it looks like it's in good working order. Okay. Okay, let's go catch something that likes bread. It leads up to the top of the island. I'd need a good reason to go up there before we start scaling any rocks. It's probably easier to get across at high tide, for me at least. I can't reach it with this crab block in the way though. I don't think he's enjoying the seaside. Come to think of it, I don't think he's enjoying anything at all. Bye. It leads up to the top. I'd need it. It's for me at least. I can't reach it. It's a beautiful giant shell. The perfect home for a delicious squishy organism. He's blocking this end of the beach. And he appears to be wearing an old chip cone for a shell. Anyone home? Why won't you come out? Oh, I see. Those gulls giving you a hard time, eh? I suppose your tasty looking get up isn't helping. Why don't you just find yourself a less delicious looking home? Oh, you can't change your shell while they're hanging around. I'd like to take a close look at that rope behind you. If I can get the girls away from you, will you let me get past? I guess that's as close as a crab can get to a thumbs up. How am I going to get these girls away from him? She's cleaning the fryer. Could you lend me some chips? Lend you some chips? I need to get some gulls away from the hermit crab down on the beach. Oh, you mean Kermit. Kermit? The hermit? I guess it's some kind of rhyming nominative determinism. Over this trouble with the gulls, he brings it on himself, you know. Last time, he made it home in a doughnut. Stupid bugger only lasted about three seconds before he was stripped naked again. Normally, I'd be happy to help, but me nozzle's been clogged all day. That sounds unpleasant. It's a disaster. Usually, a pipe cleaner sorts it out, but this is a particularly substantial blockage. Unless I can find something to clear it with, I can't fry any more chips. Bye. Have a good day. I don't fancy drinking it. Okay. Looks like... I wonder if he'll let me hitch a ride. Ladies and gentlemen, you have reached your destination. I'm guessing there must be a massive bucket and spade around. Free return trips. Visitors leaving the seaside from this island will arrive here when returning. That's good to know. A dismembered mannequin arm. Another attempt to mimic the slender jointed limbs of us crustaceans. I used to use it as a carapace scratcher, but the fingers kept coming off. 
There are only two left, so it's useless to me now. Mind if I take this? Not at all. It's pretty useless to me. The fingers keep coming off. Oh yeah, so they do. I suppose it's easier to carry around than a whole arm anyway. Do you want this pen? I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't want it. However, as it appears to be only compatible with pathetic human appendages, you may take it. Thanks. Ahem. I think not, little cockle. That is one enormous crustacean. Oh, woe is me. Is it? It certainly is, young limpet. For I have upon my claw a ring of pure shame. It looks like a pure rubber band to me. What is a mere rubber band to you is a badge of humiliation for a glorious creature like myself. A crustacean's claws are a symbol of his potency, his strength, his virility, his, um, nippability. I have been emasculated, crippled in my prime. It's why I have hidden myself away in my dazzling palace. The drapes are pure bladderwrack, by the way. But um, where are my manners? Let me introduce myself. I am Sergeant Crabulous. Before my claw was bested, I commanded the respect of all the other crabs in the area, and some of the prawns. But I will rise again. If I can get this blasted rubber band off. Hello? Hello, little scallop. What, what? 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 Do you have anything that'll help me to reach out? That's a very profound question. But if it's reaching that you want to do, you can't get much better than the ancient artifact on the wall behind me. for me if I help you get that rubber band off. What is it that you want? Well, I could do with something to help stop me from drowning. Something that'll help me to reach out and grab opportunities. I don't like the way this is going. Something a bit like that ancient artifact on the wall. Well, isn't that just flipping typical? Of course, you could just wait for the rubber band to decompose. It'll only take 50 years or so. Oh, okay, fine. Just get this band off me. How can I get the rubber band off? If my own mighty strength can't get it off, you're certainly going to need help. Do you have anyone who could help you? You know what? I think I might. If I can find a way to get him onto this island. Bye. Goodbye, my little barnacle. in the fryer. I found this thing. Do you reckon it's compatible with your nozzle? Frankly, anything's worth a try at this point. Pass it over. Right, let's see what this little chap can do. That's done it. I better get some chips and fryer right away. Could you lend me some chips? Here you are, take a small bag. Stand still long enough or the gulls will find you. Thanks. I'm not sure I fancy being mocked by gulls. Your choice, love. You want cheese on them? Not today, thanks. No point wasting good cheese on the gulls. There you go. What kinds of sauces and condiments do you offer? Oh, anything you can remember. I suppose that stands to reason. For instance, gravy, bread sauce, cheese. The list is literally endless. Wait, no, that was the end. Bye. 
Bye. Have a good day. Fancy some chips? That's so kind and selfless of you. Thank you. I'll eat them over here. making friends. Let's take a look. Mostly salty paper. Although, aha! There's a pot of something not entirely unlike vomit. It's curry sauce. It's curry sauce. from a giant cup. There's a beautiful shell behind it. I can't reach it with this giant ice cream cone in the way. Okay, let's see if I can move this thing. Go on, little fella. That shell's just perfect for you. Okay, look. Did you enjoy your chips? Just uh, don't. At least your new friends all seem to have gone now. I need your help to get the rubber band off a giant crab's claw. Why am I not even vaguely surprised? You could climb that rope. But so you can leave me hanging there again? Oh, come on, please. This is the last time I'll ask you to do anything with a rope. I promise. You know, I'm only doing this because I have literally nothing better to do. All right up there. Oh, yeah. Apart from the crippling vertigo, I'm just dandy. By the way, I wouldn't recommend the rope. I've got weird green crap all over my hands. I'll just wait for you up here. Okay, I'll try and find a way to meet you up there. Lots of little bits of shell. They look a lot less appetizing when they're on the ground. And that's saying something. Yeah. No. Okay. 
Don't slight the t- What kinds of sauces and condiments do you offer? Oh, anything you can remember. I suppose that stands to reason. For instance, gravy, curry sauce, mushy peas, bread sauce, cheese. If you can find it in your brain, we'll put it on chips. Bye. Have a good day. Spice powder. I don't think it'll be powering any intergalactic spacecraft anytime soon. Bye. So long, my little scallop. Like the tides in. Is this that giant crab you were talking about? How did you guess? Okay, let's get this over with. There we go, all disbanded. Oh, oh, oh my, it feels so good to be able to nip again. Please take the antique artifact from my wall as your reward. Thanks, I will. Toxic shock. Vases never have anything interesting in them. Artifact of his will help me in my latest nightmare. It's a coffin. Brilliant. It's too dark. It's too dark to see anything. Have you ever tried to drink whilst lying down? I'll end up with enzymes all over my face. That was definitely the worst one yet. This psychology book is utter bobbins. I'm giving it one last chance, then I'm making it a new home in a shredder. Chapter 4. Make yourself heard. Don't become silenced by fear. Express yourself through words, art, poetry or music and let the world know you're here. Silence is your enemy. That's even more vague than the last one. Wait, all this trauma's triggering another repressed vision. Lucky old me. These are getting weirder and weirder. My mum won't even allow scissors in the house. I must be getting close to discovering the root of my nightmares. And my subconscious is trying to defend itself. Not while I'm in my pyjamas. On 
some help with the competition? Sure. Can you remember anything that goes on chips? What about gravy? Of course. That's going in there. I still need five more. Red sauce is a popular choice. You mean ketchup? I'm not sure. I think they're the same thing. Then it's going on the list. Four more to go. Curry sauce. Oh, yeah. I only need three more now. Don't forget mushy peas. Ah, wouldn't want to miss that one. Another couple and we're there. Apparently, cheese. Ooh, that sounds lush. Thanks. I just need one more. How many... I just need one more. I'll get back to you. What can you tell me about the box by the window? It's full of home recordings of the chart show on cassette. A lady bought them in. They belonged to her ex-husband. They're not bad. I've been listening to them in my spare time. Anything interesting on them? Not yet, but there are tons of them to get through. Bye. See ya. In you go, Krabbies. Looks like the tide's in. Looks like you enjoy your chips. Oh, they are my absolute Achilles heel. Especially when covered in delectable chip spice. Okay, and that is... what exactly? Oh my dear, you simply haven't lived if you've not sampled the salty fire of chip spice. A subtle blend of aromatic herbs, spices and monosodium glutamate. What I want to know is, how come you remember something like that if I don't? The subconscious works in strange and convenient ways. Bye! Adios, my little clam! Pajamas. Want some help with the competition? Sure. Can you remember anything that goes on chips? Have you got chip spice? Is that a medical condition? Possibly, but I'm talking about a spicy powder you sprinkle on chips. That's good enough for me. Right, that's all filled in. Thanks for your help. I'll be closing the shop soon so I can get this posted off. Feel free to have a quick look around before I go. The chart show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. No prizes for guessing who these belong to. The police chief was looking for a cassette to record onto the day after Horatio's interview. I'll take a look. I'll take this elaborate brick off the top first. I'll give this one a whirl. something after the chart show recording. It's people talking. This is it. The missing interview cassette. I'm going to take this home and listen to it in private. Oh, are you now? I hope you're going to pay for it. Oh, come on. I helped you out with the competition. How about I let you swap it for something else? What about the metal detector I got from here in the first place? 
Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Just stick it back in the bucket of pre-loved belongings. You can take this trowel too. Ahem. <clears throat> Forgetting something. My cassette player. Whoops. Sorry. Honest mistake. Yeah, right. That's better. Now off you pop, we're closing. Time to go home and listen to this cassette properly. OK, let's have a proper listen to this. Interview with the murder suspect. Can you confirm your name for the tape, please? Horatio Fig. Speak up a bit, please. Horatio Fig. Thank you. Now, what can you tell me about your whereabouts earlier tonight? I, I've been home all evening. Really? Well, we had an anonymous tip-off earlier tonight that you were seen fleeing the new theme park. Do you have anything to say about that? I went to wish Fergus luck. Huh, of course you did. I've heard you're a very strong advocate of theme parks on your family's land. OK, look, I know Fergus and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but kill me own brother? I couldn't. I wouldn't. And, and what could I possibly have to gain? Oh, I don't know. Your brother's share of the estate, perhaps? Fergus saw to it that that would never happen when he amended his will recently. Really? So I suppose we're looking at revenge, plain and simple, then. Look, I don't need Fergus' bloody money. I'm innocent and I can prove it to you. I'm all ears. Just check the tapes. Tapes? What tapes? The security tapes at the theme park. Fergus told me it had state-of-the-art video surveillance. Do I look like a complete idiot to you? Of course we check the security tapes. They were all empty. Obviously, someone decided they didn't need to be turned on tonight. You don't have any evidence to pin this on me. You'll have to let me go. I know my rights. Oh, it's just a matter of time. I know a guilty man when I see one. We'll be starting with a thorough search of that eyesore you call home as soon as I have a warrant. The head. I beg your pardon? The head of the ferret costume. Where is it? Why don't you tell me? Fergus told me he had video cameras mounted inside each of the theme park costumes after he kept being punched by members of the public whilst handing out flyers. If you can find the head, you'll find the tape and the real killer. Well, you saw to it that the head would never be found, I'm sure. This interview is terminated. I'll be seeing you again very soon, Fig. Wow, that was intense. I guess they never found the ferret head or the security tape. It's my friend Arnie reading his comics. Hey Arn. Alright Luz, how are you sleeping? That seems to change almost hourly. In the meantime, I'm trying to solve a decade old murder case in the hope that it will somehow help me understand or otherwise purge my troubled mind. Well, good luck with that. What do you know? What? You want to know literally everything I know? No, it's a greeting, like, how are you? Oh, right. So you don't want to know what I know? No, not really. Not unless you know where to find a giant ferret head. I like you, Lucy. But you and your family are all certifiable. You do know that, right? You have no idea. What are you reading? I managed to get some comics before they closed the shop. Anything good? I'm working through them. I'll finish this one if you want to borrow it. I'm not really into horror comics. I only bought it because it had a free bag of dweebs on the front. The Phantom Organ. Enter the inspired, spine-tingling world of a deformed maniac and his enormous pipes. That's pretty niche. Thanks. That sounds like just the inspiration I need right now. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Bye. See ya. Oi, 
This gig is by special invitation only. If you don't have a flyer, you'll have to leave. Oh, where am I supposed to get an invitation from? We've been putting them through the more affluent doors in town, trying to bring in a more classy punter. I wonder if we received one. I teleported here with my map and didn't check the front door. Your men. It's one of the flyers from the pub. Live music at the ferret's head. Join German electro pop sensation Gronk for an interactive music extravaganza. Bring this special invitation with you. At least the landlord might let me in now. You again? Where's your invitation? If you don't have a flyer, you'll have to leave. Hang on, do you mean this thing someone shoved under our door? Let's have a look at it. Aye, that's the chap. Enjoy the show. The next time, bring your parents with you or something. He looks like he loves playing for a crowd. Shame, really. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order D E G C A. Gronk, I play, you watch. Interactive electro pop. Press any pedal to change the mood. This music makes me feel quite energetic. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order G A E D C. This music makes me feel sleepy. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order E D A G C. Bye then. In you go. I can't wait to see what messed up crap this one generates. Spooky! I hope there's something here that can help me with my latest nightmare. According to my dad's book, I need something to help me make a lot of noise. Although I can't help thinking that a crowbar would be somewhat simpler. Don't you think this place is spooky? Not compared to some of the horrors I've witnessed today. At least all the bird poo seems to have come off now. Bye! It's an empty goldfish bowl. Okay. No point leaving it out here. I think that's a newt inside it. It's coming out of a hole in the wall. It's a small hole in the wall. It just screams, stick something in me. Oh, that's a nice snug fit. I can only push it in halfway. My instinct is to try and bend it, but I can't do it with my bare hands. It's a long branch. I'm not strong enough to break it off. Could you get that branch for me? Just uh, get the branch? Yeah, it looks handy. Why'd you ask? Oh, I don't know. I was expecting you to ask me to climb up the tower. Or jump down the well. Or otherwise risk my own neck for no good reason. 
Can you get me the branch? Just the, get the branch? Just get the branch. You won't want me to impale myself on it or anything afterwards. No. Promise? Promise. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? I'm dreading whatever's coming. I'll give it a whack with this. The pen's now bent into an L shape. I'll take it out again. I'll let a bit of light in. Wait! Stop! Great! That's another thing I need to fix. Sorry, it just fell off. Of course it did. It was only held on with dust and goodwill. And the goodwill ran out when I spent four hours on the phone to a Swedish call center this morning. I'll just clean this up. Oh, you're so kind. Okay. It's straining up towards that hole in the ceiling. I hope it stays that way. It keeps the prickles out of my way. I snuck myself on it too many times over the years. It looks like Lloyd's first hamster. He was adorable, submissive and placid. He never really fitted in with our family. He looks just like our old cat. I can't remember his name, but my mum loved to watch him dismember rodents. They had a lot in common. He's got a lovely floral pattern all over him, but I think some assembly is still required. Munster, self-assembly, three-in-one indentured slave, consort and chiffonier. Hex key not included. They've all got little hexagon shaped holes in them. I like your hanging baskets outside. I'm glad somebody does. You hear that, Master? Somebody likes the hanging baskets. The ones I spent hours arranging. He's not listening. He never listens. Bye. Someone's clearly making an effort. What are you building? Oh, <laughs> it is my new monster. The latest in Swedish self-assembly abominations. It looks like a work in progress. Some of the parts were missing from the box. Without them, I fear it will never walk. What's up those stairs? The master. But he must be left alone. Is he asleep or something? Oh no. The master never sleeps. I've been there. No. He is playing with his organ. You mean like a pipe organ, right? Of course. He is a great musician. The only thing he loves playing with more than his organ is his giant horn. Again, this is a musical horn? Naturally. When he puts his lips upon it, you can hear it across the whole land. Now that sounds like just the kind of thing I'm after. Is there any way up the stairs? You wish to disturb the master? Why, is that a bad idea? <laughs> you remind me of my twin brother. 
Never disturb the master while he is playing. Even I avoid going up there. That is all academic anyway. My creation cannot be moved until it is complete. And the parts are on back order until next Wednesday. How's your master supposed to get down the stairs if you're blocking them? The master never leaves his room. He has everything he needs. Can you clear your monster out of the way? Oh no! Now that it is partially assembled, it's too heavy for me to lift. The only thing that can move it is... itself. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop that. Is there no way you can finish building it? Not unless I can find lungs, a brain, and a six millimeter hex key. What's a hex key? Whoa! <laughs> The hex key is a legendary device for unlocking powerful, dangerous mojo. Whoa, really? No, not really. It's a six-sided, L-shaped bar of metal for assembling Scandinavian furniture. That sounds distinctly less fun. True, although it is marginally more original. What does it need lungs for? How else is it supposed to communicate? It can actually talk. Well, not really talk so much as grunt. I order lungs that replicate the sound of bird song with every grunt. But it looks like I'll have to make do. Anything flexible that holds enough air and makes a noise will do for now. Do you have anything like that around here? Nope. What kind of brain does it need? It doesn't actually need one to function. It's purely aesthetic. So it just needs to look pretty? Have you never seen an abomination being built before? It needs to appear impressive and futuristic, whilst adding no real scientific value whatsoever. To be honest, even a nice-looking lamp would probably do. Okay, leave it with me. Nice plant. No, it isn't. I keep snagging myself. Why do you think I wear this sack? All of my other clothes got caught on the bloody thing. It's not so bad since I trained it to grow upwards, though. Bye! I found you a hex key! Ah! Thank you! This will be perfect for tightening his... nuts! <laughs> what? Never mind. Suppose this counts as inspiration. Audio whoopee at the bar. It's a real gas. Got anything new? Well, we do have another special tonight. A whoopee! I'm obliged by my contract to tell you that it's a real gas. Is it? Only in the sense that it is literally a gas, yes. It's a mixture of hydrogen sulfide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The management are trying to shift a load of old props. So each one is served in a used whoopee cushion. That sounds really unpleasant. If you think that's bad, you should try the rubber chicken soup. Look, if you just took one, you'd be doing me a favor. Do I have to inhale it? Tell you what, I'll squeeze one out for you now. 
There you go. Thanks. Okay. There we go. It's still raining. If I've learned anything, it's that you can never have enough captured insects. I'll put it straight in my bag to stop it escaping. In your pop. Could you use this for the lungs? I suppose it might work. I wonder how my monster will sound with this in its chest. Loud and proud. Oh, I do hope so. What was that noise? Squeaky floorboard. How's this for an impressive addition to your creation? Oh, very technological looking. It will make the perfect brain. I'll put it right on top when I have everything I need. This is it. After so long, I finally have everything I need. It is complete. Together, we can finally clean this place up. Be better company. I meant for lunch. It looks like a flat pack furniture box. This will block the light coming through the ceiling and make an excellent death trap at the same time. A healthy collection of back droppings. It provides access to the pipes inside the organ, but it's locked. The lock has a little musical note carved on It's closed. What was that noise? Close that cupboard at once. Bloody plant! Sorry. Tea leaf! The hinges on this door are really squeaky. Good thing, too. Clickety-click. cleaning, please put pipes back in the correct order. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Heavy duty organ oil. I guess someone's been trying to lubricate the org. Okay, let's see if this will get it down. Got it. I'll leave the branch here. Okay. There, that 
was a nice easy one. Okay, let's give this a dip. Look at that! A nice manky bucket of nice manky water. Okay. He's wearing nothing but a sack and a piece of string. You don't want to go upstairs. Well, if he's playing, I sometimes brave it. But if I need to get near him or the organ, he gets really mad. Under those circumstances, I make him a nice cup of tea and give him a chucky picky. As long as the tea is made correctly, he loves to dunk a chucky bicky in it. Then he sits back, closes his eyes and just enjoys the moment. At least it gives me a few seconds to get in and do what I need to do. Bye! Okay. I'll just give it a little oil. I wonder what these are for? They look like a set of ESP cards. I guess this isn't my lucky day. It's full of tea making paraphernalia. Let's see. Ooh, chocky bickies. Some Earl Beige tea bags. Very posh. A teaspoon. And finally some sugar cubes. What on earth am I supposed to do with all this? Oh, they're joking. I'm making a brew before this day is out, no mistake. I'll stick a bag in. I'll turn it on. Looks like it's boiled. I need something to pour the hot water into. I love my organ. It's got the make. I'll turn it on. Looks like it's boiled. I'll add a bit of hot water. I'll pop a cube in. I'll pop a cube in. Let's give it a stir. A splash of milk. Let's give it a stir. I think I've done all I should to this cup of tea. I'll give him his mug. I'll leave him a biscuit to munch on. I'd better move out of the way. Sounds like he's enjoying his brew and biscuits. It's got a series of notes written on it. A, G, E, C, D. This must be the order he's playing them in.
big brass horn. It's only held up there by a single nail. It looks like the slightest little shake could bring it crashing down. Judging by the large heap of droppings underneath it, the local bats have been using it as a roost. All in all, I'd say that standing directly underneath it is a pretty bad idea. I wonder if I could encourage the bats to knock it down. Looks like this tune has made the bats all sleepy. What was that noise? Those bats really didn't like this tune. Okay. Wow. Imaginary rucksacks are even more spacious than regular ones. There's something written on the back of the plate. Percy. Oh yeah, that was the name of my mum's favourite cat. He was a vicious little bastard. Just wipe some of the bat droppings off first. Wait, who are you? Was it you who murdered him? The one who started all this? Why can't I see your face? It's all connected. The flashbacks, the nightmares, the strange men contacting me via email, which, in retrospect, I should probably have just ignored. I feel like I'm missing one final piece of the puzzle. I need to find that security videotape. Chapter 5. Accept your fate. This looks like the last chapter. Having satisfied your psyche's need for joy, companionship, nourishment and security... You are now equipped with everything you need to complete your journey. Go and face your demons head on. Why do I feel like this is going to end badly? Another email. I'd better check it out. It's from H again. Speak to Curly. Well, that's going to be tricky. Wasn't he the deaf caretaker who reported the murder? He wasn't in the pub last time I went in. I bet the pub landlord knows where to find him, though. There's no attachment on this one. Not while I'm in my pyjamas. Wait. 
Where's Curly? He's gone. Can't stand modern music. Any idea where he'll be? Probably at the school. But the school's closed today. He likes to get stuff done while the kids aren't there to tease him. I don't blame him. OK, I'll check it out, thanks. Don't go taking the piss. He's a nice bloke and he's been through a lot. I'll add the school to my map now. You do that, crazy girl. Bye. Bye then. Hello again. I now have a happier soul. What a smellier hand. There's not much point. He can't hear me. Oh, is that so? Wait a minute, I thought you were deaf. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. You'd be amazed what people say when they think you can't hear them. So how come you're talking to me now? It seems we have a lot to talk about. What are you doing here? Your wazak of a twin brother has been applying his myriad talents on the school building. Hey, come on. How did you even know it was Lloyd who did it? <sighs> oh. I don't really blame him, given the things he witnessed. What do you mean? I figured your parents wouldn't have told you. Hey, that's their decision. I'm not about to tell people how to bring up their kids. So, what was it that Lloyd witnessed? Not just Lloyd. You were there too. What? Where? Does this have anything to do with that theme park? That was a bad business. Cost me my job. Cost the man his life. And cost his twin their sanity. I can empathise there. Guilty or not, Horatio must be slightly unhinged. Horatio? Horatio wasn't Fergus' twin. No, it was his sister. Oh, I thought... Annabel Fig, her name was. I used to have a bit of a thing for her when I was younger. That was before she went nuts and ran away from home. What can you tell me about Annabel? Well, in a nutshell, with a capital nut, she was Fergus' twin sister. Horatio was a few years older. He acted like he was lord of the manor after the parents died. When she was about 17, Annabel had a big argument with Horatio and ended up running away from home. No one ever saw her again, which is probably just as well. If she had ever wanted revenge, it would have been all too easy. She was a crack shot, and her skill with a machete made Conan the Barbarian look like a spoke-wielding toddler. She sounds a bit like my mum. What exactly happened at the theme park? That's what's weird. That night, I saw someone with Fergus who was the absolute spit of Annabelle. I'm sure it was her. Maybe she came back to see him after his photo was in the paper. He gave her the grand tour like they were best friends. Showed her the ceremonial ribbon, practiced his speech, even let her kids go on a couple of rides. Kids? Yeah, two of them. Only toddlers, mind you. Anyway, I had to go and get my plunger to sort out a particularly hefty blockage in the gents. I really miss that plunger. The kind of suction you could really... Anyway, I heard a scream. When I got there, Fergus is lying on the floor dressed as a giant polecat. There's blood all over the place and his head is... Well, not on his neck. Then I hear a noise by the gate and I see Horatio running away from the park. So I get the hell out of there, leaving my plunger behind. When anything like this goes down, everyone always blames the caretaker. It's an occupational hazard. I wasn't about to stick around and wait to be arrested. I gave the police an anonymous tip-off once I got far enough away. I found evidence that sheds doubt on Horatio's guilt. Oh, well, I never actually saw him murder his brother. But if he didn't do it, who did? That's what worries me. Apparently, there was a security camera hidden inside Fergus's ferret costume. If I can find the tape, I can finally discover the truth. 
What happened to Annabelle after the murder? She'd scurped by the time I got there. Only, get this, a few weeks later, I went back to the park to get me plunger back. It was a genuine double-ended luxury pump and squelch. They don't even make them anymore. This plunger I ever owned. But anyway... Right, so I turn up and they've already started building houses. Right on top of the theme park. There's some guy with a heart hat on looking at plans. And guess who's with him? Ed the Duck. Annabelle. That land was all owned by the Fick family. My guess is she inherited it, along with a tidy sum when her twin brother died. She changed her name, and she's lived there ever since. That's where your house is now. Yeah, I gathered. Her kids are grown up too. I suppose so. They say twins run in the family. What are you getting at? One boy, one girl she had. Oh no. They'd be your age now. I can see where this is going. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Just spit it out, will you? Can you get me plunger back? What? They didn't even level the park before they started building. So my pump and squelch is still underneath your house somewhere. I've waited over a decade to get it back. Seriously? You've basically just revealed I'm the niece of a murdered aristocrat and witnessed a life-changing horror committed by my own family. Admittedly, that bit's not a huge surprise to me, but it definitely warranted a little more sensitivity, don't you think? It was a really good plunger. How am I supposed to get underneath my house? My mate worked on the construction site. Apparently, your house has an access point which leads underground. Really? I've never seen anything. Maybe if you found the original blueprints for the building. Where would I find something like that? They're all on public record. You could ask at the library. There should be ledgers for all planning applications in the local area going back years. Find the right ledger and you'll find the blueprints. Okay, I'll start there and see what I can find out. I'll be going now. You do that. I'm looking for the ledger of local planning applications. Oh, really? How long ago do you need to go back? About ten years. Oh, in that case you'll be wanting volume 42. Just use the machine in the back. You know what to do. Thank you. I should probably return the book I'm borrowing first. This card is for library system. I don't need to look that up. The original blueprints of our house. Yoink. It's the blueprints of our house. The front door leads into the hallway. That's the bathroom. That's where my bedroom is now. That must be Lloyd's bedroom. This is my parents' bedroom. There's a huge void underneath our whole house. I don't recognise this room. It must have been bricked up. I've never really thought about it before, but this wall obviously has a void behind it. Otherwise, my parents' bedroom would just be floating. I'll just take a closer look. 
no. Nothing there. Just here, some of the papers peeling away. There's a security keypad under the wallpaper. Looks like it's not been touched for years. Although my dad can't even work the TV remote, so that's no great surprise. It's asking for a password. I'm guessing it's one my parents came up with. Oh, it looks just like our old cat. What was his name again? Is that it? No hidden doorway? I feel ripped off. Ah, now that's more like it. Just, I mean, I knew my mother enjoyed displaying dead animals, but even I didn't see this one coming. I'm not leaving here till I get some answers. Last will and testament of Fergus Fig. It was amended just a few days before his murder. I can see Horatio's name crossed out and replaced with Annabelle. It looks like she inherited his entire share of the Fig estate when he died. Well, here it is, right underneath my parents' bedroom. Please, can anyone who doesn't think that's weird leave now? I suppose I should at least take a look at it. Well, thankfully there's no disembodied head in there. But what's this? It feels like a brick. Oh, wow, it's a giant cassette. This must be the security tape Horatio mentioned in the police interview. But just look at this thing. How am I going to find a machine old enough to even play it? I'll just take a closer look. Alpha Max 60. I feel like I've seen this logo before somewhere. It was probably in one of our ancient history textbooks. Hang on, that's it. This is the same make as the video machine at school. Okay. 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 They're like those massive novelty scissors you get for cutting ribbons. My mum never allows scissors in the house. What a hypocrite. It's Fergus. His glasses are just like mine. Horatio and Fergus duelling again. I guess violence and sadism run in the family. That do They chronicle the whole case against Horatio. Despite the doubt, it could still have been him that killed Fergus. I mean, what's the alternative? It's a photo of Fig Hall. Weird to think that's where my mum grew up. It's nailed down. Let's get some of those pesky nails out. That should do it. What's underneath this thing? Oh, don't you open that trap door. You're a fool if you dare. Actually, I can't open it because it's got a mahoosive padlock on it. Filing locks is a thing, right? Damn it, now the file's broken. Okay, let's burn this thing open. Looks like it's out of gas. Stand back, er, uh, me. Great, that just broke the hammer. It's padlocked shut. This thing is heavy duty. Oh, hang on, it's not actually locked. What a muppet. Okay. Why not? When other kids dream of having a theme park in their house, I don't think this is what they're imagining. 
this'll be useful if I meet any rodents of unusual size. I guess it was much higher before it had a housing estate built on top of it. This must be where Mr Fumble originally came from. I should tell Lloyd about this local supply of fresh victims. Inside looks like a converted treadmill with a giant polystyrene dinosaur head behind it. I imagine it'd be terrifying for small children. I can't even see the bottom, although the raw sewage runoff and algae isn't helping with the visibility. It looks like a lift crossed with a coffin, crossed with a hundred health and safety violations. I might be able to lever the door with this. Hooray! Now there's nothing to stop me thoroughly investigating an abandoned underground lavatory. On second thoughts, maybe hooray wasn't what I meant at all. There's something stuck inside. Looks like a double-ended luxury pump and squelch to me. Nice. I think I've discovered all I can in here now. I suppose this is where it happened. Disneyland grand opening. Presumably not the resounding success they were hoping for. I suppose this is where it happened. I have something for you. Pumpy? Is it really you? It's yours. All you need to do is let me into the school to use the video machine. Is that all? Come with me. I'll let you in, but then you're on your own. I'm not hanging around. Come on, Betty, we're getting out of here. I hope you find what you're looking for on that tape. No going back now. Right, where's that video machine? This thing is older than the school itself. Looks like it's plugs one pixel too far from the socket. That's annoying. I need to move it closer to the socket. One of its wheels is busted. They look like round plastic balls. I knew I was carrying this around for some reason. I kind of miss it. There we go. The trolley should move now. Okay, let's move this into position. Phew, that should be close enough now. It should reach the socket now. Mop wood panelling has aged well. The buttons are jammed. It needs a remote control. Right, it's going in. Now I just need to turn on the TV. Looks like Mr Tweed put it out of reach. Probably sick of us changing the channel during lessons. No way, they're really uncomfortable. That's my locker, right on the end. If it's a book, I'm having it, apparently. Please don't 
store all sharp metal objects, batteries and corrosive chemicals in lockers during school hours. Never tell anyone your locker combination. Hmm, marker pens, chalk, an unopened roll of breath mints and a small screwdriver. I think the screwdriver in here is the only thing worth taking. I wonder if this will help me reach if I stand on it. Okay, I'll add one more. Okay, I'll add one more. Okay. Got it. It's a remote control for the school. It's the remote control for the school TV. The battery cover's screwed shut. Moulded plastic. Mr Tweed screwed them all to the floor because we kept tilting back on them. It doesn't work. The batteries are dead. Arnie's locker's next to mine. He keeps all his emergency comics and video games in it. Arnie's locker's... He keeps all his... Let's see what Arnie's got in his locker. Arnie always keeps spare batteries for his handheld video games. He wouldn't want to accidentally listen to anything Mr Tweed was saying. I'm sure Arnie won't mind if I borrow a couple. There we go, good as new. Hey, Bella, what do you think of my new look? Bella, where'd she go? Probably chasing after Lloyd. He's a chip off the old block. I do hope Horatio can make it tonight. Those two really need to patch things up after so long. Oh, hey, Lucy. Careful with those scissors now. It's slippy. Lucy, you shouldn't run with... What? What just happened? That looked like... It was me. I killed Fergus. I feel... I feel... What? What happened? I... I don't remember. She appears to be suffering a degree of memory loss after the trauma to her head. Where am I? D -d Don't worry, Lucy. You're safe. We, we got a call saying you were at the school. Your mother came and found you. C could we have a moment, Doctor? Of course. I'll just be out here if you need me. You know, Lucy, your m mother's always been the one looking out for you. Ever since... Well, you know, she won't let anything bad happen, do you? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Oh, n n never mind that now. Listen, you try to get a good n n night's sleep, you hear? We'll be back tomorrow to check on you. N n night, night. 
fugitive Horatio Thigg has been found dead after a decade of being on the run for the murder of his brother Fergus. His body was discovered on the outskirts of his hometown of Figgington. He appears to have slipped whilst running with an extra large pair of scissors. So the local police are treating his death as accidental. Finally, it seems the Fig family will be able to rest in peace. Poor guy. I wonder if he did it. I don't remember anything from the past few days. I'm just looking forward to getting some sleep. Hi, I'm Lucy. And this is my brand new nightmare. I wonder how it will end. Give my heart back, you little bits! <laughs> <laughs>